Radio News online at fppradio.com. CEO Jeff Potkel went berserk earlier this morning, becoming drenched in his own blood and the blood of several employees as he viciously demanded the staff produce more web video content or he would quote f***ing kill them all. We need more videos! Videos with bands! Random videos! Funny videos! I want a video with a celebrity! I don't give a shit which one! You think this is funny? I'll show you funny! <laughs> He threw our office manager's body against the door and then told us that nobody could leave unless we came up with three original video ideas. Then he made us watch as he bit his own tongue in half. People don't want to read. They want videos. They want to sit at work and watch videos. Videos need to go viral. 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 Is the Onion News Network. I'll stand by. This is Free Talk Live. We invite you here, toll free, to bring up anything you'd like on the live Sunday edition of the program. It's Ian in the studio with you. And Mark. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online at freetalklive.com. You can also connect with us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. So uh, we've got, uh, we're actually going to have a special guest here at some point. We're having some technical difficulties uh, getting him on the line, but he's Jacob Hornberger from the Future of Freedom Foundation, and uh, looking forward to talking with him about an unusual topic, one that really doesn't come up very often, at least by the hosts of Free Talk Live. So we'll get into that here in a moment. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Of course, you can join us online at freetalklive.com. You know, Mark, once upon a time, I paid my property taxes in dollar bills. You remember that? Yes, I remember you doing that. I think you brought some pizza for the people in line, too, didn't you? That's true. In case there was someone who was waiting behind me, I wanted to try to not be as, uh, as much of a burden on them as I could be. And uh, brought the pizza sort of as a, an, a, an advance apology, I guess, yeah. for what was going to happen. Peace which offering. was That it was going to take some time for these bureaucrats to count the $3,000 in, and that was ha- only for half a year, by the way, the $3,000 in property taxes in ones. So $3,000 in ones stacks up pretty thick. It's a good three big stacks that I had stacked on top of one another in there. And yeah. It, it did take them a little while to go through it. Eventually, they ended up getting a money counting machine in that particular office, just in case things like that were to happen to them in the, <laughs> in the future. It's wise. But in that case, they were caught off guard and they weren't really prepared for it. So, did I, you ever see the guy who folded up his property taxes in origami pigs and brought them in a donut box? No, no, that's how he paid a, a ticket. That's right. Yeah, yeah, folded, I did see that one. Folded them up in origami pigs and then uh, brought it in a Dunkin' Donuts pocket. Box. Right. So, yeah. I mean, I paid the taxes and while I was while they were counting it, I, I read out a statement about how I you know, had a fundamental disagreement with the idea of coercion and taxes and talking about some of the terrible things that their government had done to some of my friends like our former co-host Sam Dotson at the time. So I just kind of had this prepared speech that I gave during it. But ultimately, it made for a, a good YouTube video. There have been a number of people who have said that uh, – there's been a number of people who have said that they have seen that video and they were inspired by it. In fact, somebody else, I think, at least one other person has gone and paid some form of tax in ones as because they were inspired by that video. And of course, I was inspired by other people who had done the same thing. Um, and now a man has done something like that, but a little bit different. He's uh, put a twist on this situation. man in Texas has been arrested while trying to pay his tax in $1 bills for disrupting the operation and efficiency of the local tax office. Ridiculous. Timothy Norris, age 27, was trying to pay his $600 property taxes from RT.com at a tax office in Wichita Falls, Texas, last Wednesday when he was told to leave the office by tax assessor collector Tommy Smith. Smith accused Norris of creating a disturbance and disrupting the efficiency of the authority as the latter wanted to pay the whole sum with $1 bills. However... You know, this is legal tender, right? There's a detail. 
However, the banknotes were folded very tightly. Ah, uh, I see. So it required tax office personnel approximately six minutes to unfold each bill. Oh, come on. That sounds unbelievable. Only a government bureaucrat could take six minutes to unfold a bill. How? I, I want to see a picture of what this guy's bills looked like before he took them in there. How how possibly tightly could one fold a dollar bill? I don't know. I mean, maybe it is possible to make some sort of jigsaw knot out of a dollar bill, but I highly doubt it. It's just a sheet of cotton, right? I mean, it's, it's like a material, a fabric of some sort. Yeah. So, I don't go for it. I don't believe that claim. Unfolding the bills, they say, paralyzed work in the office. So Smith and Norris, or yeah, Smith asked, asked Norris to leave. However, the latter refused. Why would you want to let them count the money on their own, right? You would want to observe that process. Presumably. Why would they want him to leave? The Wichita County Sheriff's Office deputy who was present as the situation unfolded tried to arrest Norris, but he pulled away. So the deputy had to use force to detain him, which they really like doing that. Norris was charged with criminal trespass and additionally charged with resisting arrest, of course. His bail was announced and as uh, standing at $500 for both charges. So I'm very curious to know exactly what these bills look like. I mean, was it like origami folded bills? And if so, does it really take that long to... Uh, to I understand it takes a long time to create origami. Does it really take as much time to undo Unfold it? it. Yeah, I'm, I'm highly skeptical. Share your thoughts here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. But it does beg the question, um, why why is it that uh, you can't use – I mean, what what? how far can one go in paying one's bill as a protest? and uh, Before it becomes disruptive? Yeah, before it becomes disruptive. Because these government bureaucrats think everything's un- disruptive. Ultimately, yeah. you're disruptive for bringing in $1 bills. I mean – you know, just just write us a check. Send us our money the way we want it. When we steal from you, we demand not just your money, but your obeisance. And just to be clear, they did not charge him with disrupting the operation and efficiency of the tax office. That's not a criminal charge. They charged him with criminal trespass, meaning that he was trespassing at the location at which he is told that he has to come on a yearly or maybe more than once a year basis to pay these taxes. Now, I guess you could argue that, well, he could still pay the taxes by check via mail, but he he is a member of the public. He is trying to go and be obedient and pay these people their extraction, and yet he's been charged now with criminal trespass for being on ostensibly public property. I mean, this is yet another example, and I've had plenty of experience with this, being banned from the state liquor stores and the local schools uh, here. The the courthouse, too. The courthouse, uh, which was was lifted. That one was found unconstitutional. Found unconstitutional. The others have yet to be challenged in court. Yeah. Uh, But, yeah, I mean, I understand what this is all about. They can tell you that all of a sudden now what you thought was public property that you paid for, that he was trying to pay for. Right. They tell you uh, all the time, it's all of our property. That you can't be there. You're not allowed to be here. And if you come here, then we're going to put you in another cage, in another building. (laughs) We're going to put you in this other building over here if you come in this one building. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Let's uh, let's go to Jacob Hornberger. He is on the line here, and I apologize, uh, Jacob, for the technical difficulties there at the beginning of the show. Thanks for your patience. Oh, you're welcome. Nice to be here with you guys. Yeah, you're. Uh, we've had you on the, the show in the past uh, as a uh, founding member of uh, the Future of Freedom Foundation. Well, I founded the organization, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I've been on the show before. Well, welcome back. Uh, as my understanding, Mark reached out to you, wanted to bring you on to talk about an unusual subject, one that uh, we're fairly skeptical of here on Free Talk Live. Mark, can you explain? Yeah. So um, I know that Jacob wrote a book and I was on the phone with him and, you know, he he wanted to talk about the book and I don't have a problem with that, but I it was the subject that kind of, uh, you know, so this isn't what we usually do on Free Talk Live. But then I read the description on Amazon. And the description is, according to a 2013 Gallup poll, the vast majority of Americans don't believe the government's uh, Warren report about the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. But there are so many theories about the assassination that it's difficult to make sense of it all or even know where to start. Who has the time to delve into the controversy and figure it out? And what difference does it make anyway? And that's how I feel, uh, Jacob. And that's what sold me is this first paragraph of your uh, description. I mean, it's not like you buried this down in the description. That's the first thing you said is that I wonder what difference does it make anyway? 
Yeah, well, I, I think myself, I'm certainly no expert like some of the assassination researchers, but that's the most common thing I hear from people is that, oh, my gosh, it is so overwhelming. There's so many books and so many ideas and, and theories, and I, and I just don't have the time, to, and I don't even know where to start. And so I thought, well, okay, I'm going to write a book addressed to that particular segment of America. Uh, it's like a primer. I call it a primer, a primer into the assassination that explains why the assassination researchers have concluded that this was a national security state operation, this was a regime change operation, and that's the title of my book, Regime Change, the JFK Assassination. And so I, I so thought, the government well, did this. Is that the claim? Yes. Yeah. Well, one, one branch of the government did it, the national security branch of the government, which was effectively waging a war against the executive branch of the government. All right, I want to hear uh, more about it. Stand by Jacob Hornberger, the toll-free number tonight if you've got a question for him, 855-450-FREE. Uh, why should we care about the JFK assassination? What's you know, what's the relevance of this? I'm not convinced, but we'll find out here more in moments. And you can share your thoughts as well. It is Free Talk Live. And now from the Cato Institute, the Cato Constitution Minute. The Constitution was not America's first governing document. The first was the Articles of Confederation, created in 1775, under which the existing states grouped themselves as a union. Under the Articles, votes by the 13 states had to be unanimous, and what was enacted didn't have the force of law. It was merely a suggestion to the state. The Constitution's supporters, the Federalists, argued that the Articles were weak because the nation couldn't make good on its debts or prevent squabbles among states. Be careful what you wish for, their opponents, the Anti-Federalists warned. A more powerful federal government could dominate the states and people. The Anti-Federalists lost that battle and the new Constitution was ratified. But it is in large part thanks to them that we have a Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments to the Constitution adopted to address their concerns. To learn more, visit the Cato Institute online at cato.org. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. 
When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, we continue here. Your calls and thoughts are certainly welcome about whatever's on your mind. We'll uh, resume our normal format of the show here in moments, which is, of course, Open phones all the time about whatever you'd like to discuss. We've actually got Jacob Hornberger with us from the Future of Freedom Foundation, and I want to continue a discussion with him here in a moment. But first, let me tell you about Cameron Hughes Wines uh, at chwine.com. What they do, what Cameron does, is he goes around the world and around Napa Valley and gets the best deals on the the highest end wines. So he takes the overage that these winemakers have, and every business that produces something is going to have some kind of overage. He takes their overage, bottles it up, um, puts his own label on it with a lot number, and you know that way you can identify the wine that you liked, although you may not know where it came from. You likely won't know where it came from unless you're just a good wine guesser. Um, and he takes these high-end bottles of wine, 70 to $100. These are 90 points um, on the, the wine rating scale. And he prices them between $15 and $30. It's a great deal. All you have to do is go there and check it out. I We had a wine tasting. Everything was awesome, uh, from the uh, the Cabernet Sauvignon to the... the, the uh, what else did we have? Um, Ian, I'm trying to think of all the different names. Uh, there was a we, Meritage, a Meritage, Triage. A triage, and then a Pinot Grigio. Yeah, anyway, there was one of those. Chardonnay. Yeah, a whole bunch of them, and yeah. they were all great. So it, I would just pick my favorite wines, get a box of them, get that six box set because it's a you know it's it's a nice size to ship because free shipping, and you get free shipping if you use coupon code FTL. You also get twenty percent off on select bottles. I'd try those too. Mm-hmm. It must be a must. Be, they must be good. Go check them out. Chwine.com. There's a microphone in the upper left hand corner. You click on that, you enter coupon code FTL, then you'll get the free shipping, and you'll get the the 20% off on select bottles, and all the bottles are priced great. So, chwine.com. Jacob Hornberger's back with us. You've written a book about the JFK assassination, and Free Talk Live isn't really a conspiracy theory show, Jacob. Uh, I, I have to say that my normal critique here is that... You know, what's the point? Why does it matter who killed JFK? I mean, if we find out the government killed JFK, that's yet another story of government corruption that, you know, we're already well f- uh, familiar with the idea that you can't trust the state and that, you know, certainly they've done false flags before. Why should someone spend time uh, researching this? Well, we can we can talk about government in general, but actually what, what's fascinating about this particular case, and my book isn't a, isn't a book about conspiracy theories. It's about just looking at the facts that have come out, especially since the 1990s when the Assassination Records Review Board um, re- forced the release of a lot of government documents relating to the assassination. And my book just looks at the facts and draws the logical implications from those facts. Uh, But the reason we should care is that we're dealing with the national security branch of the government, which is really the most powerful branch. It was not a branch that came into existence when the government, when the country was founded. It came into existence in the 1940s and it immediately became the most powerful branch of the government. So what branch are we talking about here? I mean, when you say national security, what are are we talking about? We're talking about the great big military establishment, the CIA, the NSA. Okay. And, and this particular branch, I call it a branch. Other people call it double government, uh, deep state. I, I consider just a separate branch immediately became the most powerful branch. And what's fascinating about what happened in 63 is that a war broke out between the executive branch and, and the national security branch, and specifically John Kennedy. That Kennedy started moving the country in a direction that the national security branch, the military and the CIA, totally opposed. And which they, direction was that? What? Uh, where did he want to go that they didn't like? He wanted to end the Cold War. He wanted to establish good relations with the Soviet Union and Cuba. He was he was circumventing them and, and uh, 
approaching Castro with secret contacts and Khrushchev with secret correspondence. The CIA gets wind of this, and they considered it a grave threat to national security, that, that Kennedy was disarming America. He'd, enter, he'd entered into a nuclear test ban treaty with the Soviets. He had given a tremendous um, speech at American University in June of 63 called the, the Peace Speech. So he was moving America in the direction that America ultimately moved in in 1989, uh, where the Cold War was ended. Um, but back in 63, this was heresy to the net, to the military and the CIA. And we see that, for example, with Chile 10 years later, where the, the national security branch, the military, the intelligence forces attacked the president and and effectively took over the entire government um, in, in a regime change operation. This that was, was 10 instigated. years later. Oh, I see. This has happened in Chile. Okay, I'm, I thought it was yeah. over Chile is what you're saying. All right, I understand. No, it, was, it was in Chile, but it, the principle was the same, that, that Allende, who had been democratically elected, was reaching out to the Soviets. He, he was trying to establish good relations with the Soviets. He was a Marxist uh, that had been elected by the citizenry, and, the, and the, the U.S. government said, we can't allow this to stand. And so they, they told the the national security state in Chile, the military, they were teaching them at the School of the Americas, you have a duty to do this, that when your president vi uh, is threatening national security with his policies, you've got to violate the Constitution and you've got to protect national security. So it's clear they, they believe that that's their role in life, to protect national security. So the question then is, did Kennedy present a threat to national security in the eyes of the military and the CIA? And all the evidence that's been coming out, especially since the 90s, is that there was a clear war that was taking place between Kennedy and his military and CIA people. So this uh, Lee Harvey Oswald fella, he, he, didn't, uh, he didn't do it? Yeah, that's a fascinating case. As I, as I um, point a question, as I point out in my book, if you go down one route and say he was alone, that leads inevitably to dead ends. If you say, well, he was part of a conspiracy, that leads to dead ends. Uh, and so the, the only logical explanation for what happens here is that Oswald is the patsy that he said he was. And all the evidence indicates that he was, a, he was a, uh, uh, an operative of U.S. intelligence, either FBI, CIA, uh, Navy intelligence. I mean, this guy was a Marine. I mean, how many Marines do you know uh, are, are self-avowed communists? Not only that, but th this man who supposedly defects to the Soviet Union, or he does defect to the Soviet Union, he's former, a former Marine, they don't ever lay a hand on him. This is the height of the Cold War, where they're going after the, uh, the Rosenberg with the death penalty. They're going after every communist they can find, uh, destroying the Communist Party. They never lay a hand on this self-avowed traitor communist. And uh, I argue that the implication is, is that's because that was his cover. There's no other logical explanation for it because they were not letting uh, alone any other communist in the in America or around the world for that matter. How does it affect us today? Well, we've got this huge national security apparatus. Is now assassination is part of the its normal features. You know, back in in '63, uh, assassination was something that they kept hidden. It was something they were embarrassed about. You know, they, they had a formal program of assassination against foreign leaders. Nobody, nobody seems to question that. They were trying to assassinate Castro. They had entered into a partnership with the mafia. And then they entered into, the CIA enters into a massive assassination scheme with, with uh, the Pinochet regime after, after the regime change operation in Chile. But yet today, so you have this straight line from the war on communism, the Cold War, all the way up today with the war on terrorism, the, 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 the whole shebang with, with now the government has the power to assassinate Americans. Jacob, the, hang on. Hold that thought. We'll come back here in a moment. Uh, the toll-free number is basically saying there was a, a coup here in the United States over John F. Kennedy. It's Free Talk Live. More coming up. By now, you may have heard a bit about Bitcoins, but did you know Bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept Bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning Bitcoins or trying to make money in the Bitcoin market, you've got to know BidBit.co. Why? Because BidBit.co is where you can easily receive Bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for Bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and 
auction your products and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and free to bid at BitBit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. BidBit.co. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme, M E M E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value and they look neat too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy to use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme, your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Pure Life Water, helping you drink better and live better by providing a zero-calorie alternative to sugary drinks. Visit us at nestle-purelife.us. When kids are playing, they often don't want to stop to keep hydrated, so send them out with a bottle of water and encourage them to take frequent drink breaks or call them inside for a quick sip. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, you can also join us on Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. However, if you have a question for Jacob Hornberger, uh, he is here on the line with us. He's talking about a, what it sounds like a coup or an alleged uh, national security coup over top of the U.S. presidency back when John F. Kennedy was assassinated. The book he's written about it is called Regime Change. And uh, so if you want to ask him a question, you do have to call us on the toll-free number because he is on Skype and we can't conference Skype calls. So our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. With you in studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. And me, Mark. And we've heard a lot about the National Security Agency over the last couple of years since the Edward Snowden revelations. And, you know, the big takeaway from Ed Snowden, if you can boil it all down, is that he recommends that people get encrypted and that you take some time and some effort and protect yourself Online, ProXPN can help you with that. 
You go to proxpn.com slash FTL, download their app for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, also Linux, so pretty much whatever you're using. Uh, you download ProXPN, you get started, and they encrypt your internet connection, meaning that your ISP won't know what you're doing online anymore, and neither will others who might have been trying to snoop on you. Uh, so it's very handy. You can go to ProXPN.com slash FTL+. Plus. When you upgrade to their premium account, you can get it at 50% off for the price of the annual account by using code FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live and the number 50. So with that premium uh, premium account, you'll get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world you can access, you can privately torrent, and get past regionally blocked websites. Plus, ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all. You get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Just go to ProXPN.com slash FTL, and don't forget promo code FTL50 when you upgrade. That's ProXPN.com slash FTL as we go back to Jacob Hornberger. So, Jacob, I mean, would you say that, that, I've, been, that I've summarized this, that... You're you're pointing out that uh, you've you've got a book. It's about the JFK assassination, but about how it's part of a larger picture of the national security apparatus literally assassinating somebody, according to you know your the president, your assessment of the evidence, assassinating the person who's supposed to be their boss. That's exactly right, and but that's no different from what the Chilean national security establishment did to their boss. And what what and your your term for coup is is a very appropriate one. But what was different about this one is that in other countries where you have the military take over, which, by the way, was a real threat that Kennedy was concerned about. Um, here in this case, you have an elevation of a vice president whose whose policies mirror those of the military and the CIA. Mm -hmm. So John, when Johnson comes in, he immediately abandons everything that Kennedy is doing. He cuts off negotiations with the Soviets, the secret negotiations. Castro continues to cut contact him secretly and say, hey, let's get this thing going. Let's end a Cold War like you know Obama's doing now. And Johnson said, absolutely not. Now, he didn't give the military their invasion of Cuba, which is what they had wanted, but he did give them their war in Vietnam. While Kennedy, it's very clear now, was pulling the troops out of Vietnam. And so it was clearly a, a, a change in direction with the regime change. Now, I mean, are you suggesting here that well, first of all, I guess a question. It would seem to me that prior to John F. Kennedy that all presidents would have been heavily influenced by you know whatever national security apparatus there was, as long as the apparatus existed for that president. Probably the earlier ones. Obviously, there was no NSA back in the, the olden days. But uh, you know they would have been influenced by these people. Are you suggesting that Kennedy was somehow a rogue uh, individual in some way that uh, you know that he managed to get through the rigmarole and the political process of be, you know getting rising through the ranks of the Democratic Party and then going through you know the competition for presidency and not somehow be completely obedient to those folks like why would he break uh, away from what those people wanted in the first place? Yeah, that's an absolutely fascinating question and and it really goes to the heart of what's going on here. Uh, but let's keep in mind first that when I talk about this national security apparatus, I'm talking about something brand new that comes into existence at the end of World War II. Mm -hmm. and, and Eisenhower alluded to this in his farewell address in 61, where he says, we have this military industrial complex. It's new to America. We've never had this before. It's necessary, he said, which I questioned. But he says, let's not forget that this is a grave threat, a potential threat to our liberties and democratic processes. Well, Kennedy comes into office believing all this Cold War stuff, anti-communist stuff, that the communists are coming to get us and we have to look under our beds for a communist and we're under siege from the, from the Soviet Union and Cuba's a dagger at our throat and he buys into all this. He, he, he goes along with the CIA's plan at the Bay of Pigs and it, and it was a CIA plan that was conjured up during the Eisenhower administration. I think most people but, agree with that. Yep. Yeah, but but then he he Kennedy realized he's been double crossed after the Bay of Pigs. He he takes um, responsibility for it publicly, but he fires Alan Dulles, who ironically ends up on the Warren Commission. He was the chairman of the CIA. He he fires uh, Bissell, uh, the the deputy commander, and then another guy named Cabell. He transfers to the Pentagon, and he was furious. He says, "I'm going to tear the CIA into a thousand pieces." because they had led him to believe that air support wasn't necessary when they knew that air support was going to be necessary. And they figured he just wouldn't want to lose face and have to bring in the air support. So he realized he had been misled. Then you've got the Cuban Missile Crisis, 
which the, the military is saying, you've got to invade, and they were pressuring on him to invade, and he refuses to do that. He ends up making a deal with, with the Soviet Union that the United States will never invade Cuba. Well, that dashed the, the hopes of the national security establishment. They believed that America couldn't survive a communist Cuba. So all of a sudden, Kennedy has this breakthrough after the Cuban Missile Crisis, and so does Khrushchev, where they say, we need to just tear down this whole Cold War. We need to end it. It's too dangerous. And so that's when Kennedy has this breakthrough that, in my opinion, actually starts questioning the whole military industrial complex, the whole thing that Eisenhower had done. In fact, when he gives his peace speech at American University, he doesn't even consult with the military and he doesn't consult with the CIA. And he announces in this speech, which is really a remarkable speech, where he says, Americans now need to reevaluate how they look at the Soviet people, and we need to, we need to survive on this earth together, and we need to work together to, uh, as two countries with different ideologies, but with the same aim of survival and prosperity and so forth. Didn't the conflict in French Indochina, which later becomes uh, Vietnam, begin under JFK? Well, no, it was actually, no, actually not. But he visited there. He was a U.S. senator at the time in 54 when that was taking place, when, when the French lost to Dien Bien Phu. And that had a remarkable impact on him. Uh, he, he saw what happens when you get involved in a land war in Asia. And then he sees the French. Uh, well, he, he wasn't there when the French lost, but he sees that the French lose. And so when, when the military was pressuring him to send troops to Vietnam, uh, they, they first started out with Laos, and he said no. But they kept pressuring, and you can see the, the, the power that the military and the CIA have on a president at this point. So he finally succumbs to this pressure and says, okay, I'll give you some troops in Vietnam, but only advisors. He never sent combat troops. Okay. In. And then about a few weeks before he was assassinated, there's a, there's a famous uh, order, that executive order he issued, saying, begin with 1,000 troops withdrawal from Vietnam, and then he tells his aides, uh, as soon as the 64 elections over and I beat Goldwater, uh, we're going to have a full pullout from Vietnam. Well, this was heresy. I mean, th this was the height of the Cold War. This was effective, effective to surrender because if you don't go into Vietnam, the dominoes start falling, with the final domino being America. So Kennedy was, K Kennedy was a heretic in terms of the whole Cold War mindset. Hmm. It, it was because he achieved this breakthrough that this was all just a bunch of bull. And so... You're saying they took him out, and I guess another big question is that are they still in control, right? I mean, was this a permanent coup, and the National Security Agency has ruled over uh, presidents with Not an iron fist? Not just the NSA, fist, but— uh, Or the CIA, et cetera. But, They've ruled over uh, the presidents with an iron fist ever since, that, you know, Obama and uh, Bush, you know, they, if they know what's good for them, they'll do what they're told. Another fantastic question. It's obviously speculation. If you want, hang on. We'll uh, bring you back here for it. In moments with more with uh, Jason, uh, Jacob, excuse me, Jacob Hornberger. <laughs> He's with us here, and you can call in with your thoughts at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. You can take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. This is a message for everyone suffering from acid reflux. Right now, Zimbiotics is inviting you to participate in a special nationwide giveaway of a new breakthrough that actually cures acid reflux. That's right. We're giving everyone who calls in the next 10 minutes a free full-size trial of this life-changing discovery. Just call 1-800-939-5356. If lines are busy, try again. This is an exclusive radio-only offer. Zimbiotics is our number one product for acid reflux, and there's nothing like it. Powered by all natural, doctor-recommended ingredients, it's scientifically designed to cure acid reflux the healthy and natural way. But you can only get a free trial by calling now. Take part in this special nationwide giveaway and see the results for yourself. If you want to cure your acid reflux, call now to participate in this special nationwide giveaway of Zimbiotics. For your free trial, call 1-800-939-5356 in the next 10 minutes. Hurry, supplies are limited. 1-800-939-5356. 
1-800-939-5356. 1-800-939-5356. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years in serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light System today complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231 and the Berkey Guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey Light, the Berkey Guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey Guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653. Or order online at GoBerkey.com. That's GoBerkey.com today. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. 855-450-3733. Maybe you've got a question for Jacob Hornberger from the Future of Freedom Foundation, also the author of Regime Change, a book talking about how the, in his opinion, the CIA and uh, NSA, the National Security Military Industrial Complex apparatus, seized control of the presidency with the assassination of John F. Kennedy and uh, you can obviously read more about it in his book, which, uh, you know, I got a question for you, uh, D Jacob Hornberger. Is the book available through the usual sources like Amazon? Well, it's only available on Amazon. Um, okay. and, and I might mention that this is actually the second book I've written on this. The, the oh. first book came out last September called The Kennedy Autopsy, which we published in conjunction with another ebook on Amazon called JFK's War with the National Security Establishment. That goes to the motive here that we've been talking about, and that's by Douglas Horn, who served on the ARRB in the 1990s. Those two books, they what is the ARRB? The Assassination Records Review Board. Gotcha. That was what came out after the JFK movie by Oliver Stone that forced the release of all of this evidence that that really is a lot much of which is detailed in my book. It's it's almost like brand new evidence. Hmm. Uh, but those two books 
have been on the Amazon bestseller list, top 100 best-selling books of the 20th century American history since January. Wow, and congratulations. It, yeah, it's really nice. They sell for a dollar each. Now, the regime change sells for, for 4 99 cents each. That's okay. pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good deal. And and this the regime change book sells for four ninety nine. But you asked a, a question before the break yep. about you know, what is what is the difference here? Do, do, does the national security branch still hold its power? And there's a great book uh, called um, Nash, The National Security State and Double Government or National Security and Double Government by a professor at Tufts University called Glennon. Uh, that's his last name. And it's it's effectively brand new. And he makes this art. Now, it's not a book about the assassination, but he makes an extremely persuasive case of what I'm talking about, that Ever since the advent of this national security establishment in the 1940s, it has become the real government in America, and that there is this aura that the the democratic uh, part of the government, the part that was established in 1787, the judicial branch, the legislative branch, the executive branch, that that's where the power is. But that's only because they want Americans to feel like everything's normal. But he argues very persuasively that all of the power, or most of the power is with the military and the CIA and the NSA, be, primarily because of their information gathering ability. But I would add to that, mm. that information gathering ability is they just have the power, period. I mean, they, ha they have the guns and the tanks and the bullets. And, and if anybody questions that, I say, well, look at Chile. I mean, when Chile, when the military there, the military branch got into a uh, fight with Allende, there, Allende fought back. He had well, a military helmet. He lost. The the difference is um, that you know in the United States the the military industrial complex wouldn't at this point. It seems unlikely that they would just go ahead and seat themselves as a sort of a, a military but banana republic or something. Well, like no, that. right. That's what he's saying is right. that they're uh, you know, they're still pulling the strings. Right. Essentially. It's the, it's, I, I get that it's a string pulling as opposed to just sort of setting up a junta as a, as it were. Yeah, that wouldn't look as good. It, it would certainly not look as good. Um, so the, I would agree that the United States military has basically been in charge since, uh, since Vietnam, uh, as far as, you know, funding sitting there as the, the 800 pound gorilla. Um, it's pretty obvious that U S citizens foot the bill for, to some extent, peace around the world. What uh, let's call it stability, stability around the world. And, uh, you know, sh uh, clear shipping lanes. Uh, the the U S uh, Navy is, is making sure that the vast majority of places that uh, shipping lanes are clear and U S taxpayers are paying for that. And has really very, you know, why isn't Europe paying for that? Well, they don't have to because somebody else is already doing it. So I would, I would concur with that, but what does, is, is this going to be sort of the book? Is this going to – are we going to go down in history understanding that uh, JFK was, in fact, assassinated by the military-industrial complex? And um, the – you know, is this going to change something? Well, you know, I argue independently of the, cons uh, of the assassination that the, the, uh, the adoption of this national security apparatus is the worst mistake uh, America's ever made. I mean, th this is total, a total violation of the principles of freedom and, and limited government, uh, a government that has the power to assassinate its own citizens with impunity and round them up and torture them and put them in military dungeons. That's not a free society. But it was all justified under the, under the Cold War, and now it's justified under the war on terrorism. And I, argument, I argue that the only way to achieve a free society is through the dismantling, not the reform of this apparatus. How is that going and, to happen? I mean, obviously, you can't elect your way to success at the national level. I mean, all this effort being put behind certain presidential candidates, for instance, you might as well just be throwing your money into a fire um, you know, this isn't going to change. D.C. isn't going to be reformed, is it? No, of course not. And, and I agree with you. It's just a waste of money to get into, into the political campaigns and think that you're going to elect the right Republican or Democrat or whatever. It's going to change things. But look, ideas matter. Ideas have consequences. I mean, you guys got this show and you, you had that, that, that little blurb about this guy paying his taxes. And well, why do you do that? Well, because you believe that ideas have power. They can transform a society. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we see that America lived without things like the drug war and the standing military and a foreign empire, military bases and a CIA. And bad ideas cause this major change. And so why can't it work in reverse? Where good ideas, the freedom ideas, 
cause a transformation in people's thinking that then brings about the change in, in society. And that's where I agree. Well, too. I like the idea uh, of uh, people manifesting a better world for themselves. It's just kind of a messy process, right? Like, you know, getting from here to there isn't necessarily going to be a, a bump free ride, I guess. Well, that's probably true, but I mean, it doesn't have to be that way. I mean, you know, you, you have these giant transformations in society like freedom of religion and due process of law and trial by jury that come, come back by uh, to a society, sometimes relatively peacefully. I mean, England ended slavery very peacefully. Uh, so it's entirely possible that if Americans discover their heritage and they realize that America's foreign policy was based in large part on, on Swiss foreign policy, which is totally defense. Don't go abroad in search of monsters to destroy and so forth. Don't have this huge military establishment. Uh, then I think we can see some major fundamental changes. Yeah, I would say we're nowhere near that happening in the, in the United Where's States. Where's a ways as a off? Whole. That's I mean, for people sure. People seem to just get all kinds of behind uh, whenever the war sabers start rattling. A lot of uh, Americans fall well, right in behind. They get very excited about it. I think the biggest problem with that is essentially the uh, the near religious reverence that we have for military men. Those those brave mm. men and women who gave their lives for you know whatever it is that they they claim that they gave their lives for. In my opinion, it's basically to keep uh, the lies of politicians. Yeah, the lies of politicians from looking like uh, lies and uh, to line the pockets of the military industrial complex. That's what two time uh, Medal of Honor winner Smedley Butler said. And I don't believe that I've got enough to, uh, you know, I've got enough information to say that he was wrong. I've got a question though, Jacob. Um, let me ask you this: Quickly. Does this? It might un unwrap this whole theory. Is why didn't Dwight D. Eisenhower, who lived until 1969, come out and say something like, you know, he thinks that uh, Kennedy was assassinated by the military-industrial complex? Well, I think it's extremely difficult for establishment people to talk about that. I mean, we all see what happens when somebody suggests that this was a this was a national security operation, you know, conspiracy theory and so forth. But but the the guy that came closest to it was was Truman, uh, who brought the CIA into existence. And 30 days after the Kennedy assassination, and I don't think this is a coincidence, he publishes an op ed in The Washington Post that says the CIA has become a very sinister organization. It's engaged in things that I never had designed for it, and it's 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 affecting credibility of our country in uh, all over the world. And that we need to do something about this. And I think that what he was really doing was alluding to the to the to the idea that this could have very well been the case. But keep in mind that the evidence, and, and this is, I keep coming back, my book's not about theories, it's about look at the evidence, and, and the primary evidence is the autopsy. I mean, that's really a key to understanding the, the assassination is the autopsy. And much of the evidence relating to the autopsy didn't get released till the ARRB met in the 1990s and forced the military to disclose what had happened during the autopsy. Now, some of it had been released, but not the incriminating stuff. And when you look at the autopsy, you, you're shocked. I mean, that was my first book that I mentioned earlier, The Kennedy Autopsy. When you look at the evidence, just straight evidence of what happened with the autopsy, it's almost impossible not to come to the conclusion that this was a false autopsy, a fraudulent autopsy, and that means cover-up. And once you conclude that that's a cover-up, then you ask yourself, who are they covering up for? Jacob Hornberger, uh, thanks for coming on Free Talk Live tonight. Definitely appreciate your time. Uh, what is the website for the Future of Freedom Foundation? Triple F dot org, correct? That's correct. And thanks for having me on, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks for your time Good. tonight. Jacob Hornberger there with us. Our phones are open to you to talk about anything that's on your mind. Coming up, police pay up to the hackers. We'll tell you what happened. 855-450-FREEZE, our number. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Indefinite extension of the human lifespan is coming. But is it coming soon enough for you and me? That's the $80,000 question. I say $80,000 because that's what it costs to have your head cryonically frozen by Alcor. I've committed to do it. I got a life insurance policy, and I made them the uh, beneficiaries. Bam. My best shot at living forever. Interested? Contact them 
at alcor.org. A-L-C-O-R dot O-R-G. Mention my name and I get a free year of membership. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, April 12, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.51 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,208 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $238. Antiwar.com reports meeting Friday night at a summit in Panama, President Obama and Cuban President Raul Castro shook hands in what was the first direct meeting between the two nations' heads of state in over 50 years. It's an historic encounter, but more important is what it represents, the very real chance of rapprochement between the two countries and an end to half a century of U.S. economic embargoes. The next big step in that direction would be the removal of Cuba from the U.S. list of state sponsors of terrorism. There was never much real evidence to support that listing, but this is the first time in decades the matter has ever been under real consideration, with the U.S. State Department reporting to have endorsed the removal. Progress in such removals is often dependent on political conveniences at any given time, and U.S. officials are said to be pressing Cuba for guarantees on diplomatic access, something obviously totally unrelated to terror, in return for their removal. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. UPI reports following a Justice Department report alleging sexual misconduct among DEA agents, Attorney General Eric Holder warned DOJ employees that soliciting prostitutes is a violation of policy, whether on or off duty. In a letter released to DOJ staff on Friday, Holder wrote, I want to reiterate to all department personnel, including attorneys and law enforcement officers, that they are prohibited from soliciting, procuring, or accepting commercial sex. Holder wrote in the letter, this rule applies at all times during an individual's employment, including while off duty or on personal leave, and applies regardless of whether the activity is legal or tolerated in a particular jurisdiction, foreign or domestic. The caution comes two weeks after a report that found several Drug Enforcement Administration agents had sex parties with prostitutes that were hired by drug cartels. Justice Department Inspector General Michael Horowitz found 10 agents, most of whom had top-secret security clearances, had engaged in the parties with prostitutes because it was the local culture. Seven of the ten agents admitted to being at the parties, most of which took place on U.S. government leased properties. Many of those implicated in the report received minor disciplinary action. The Washington Post reported Holder and Deputy Attorney General Sally Yates have reviewed the report and concluded the disciplinary process at the DEA was inadequate. Holder's letter hints at increased oversight for employees and supervisors. 
For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Hillary Clinton is expected to announce her second run for the presidency on Sunday, starting her campaign as the Democrats' best hope for fending off a crowded field of lesser-known Republican rivals and retaining the White House. The overwhelming favorite for the Democratic presidential nomination, Hillary will nonetheless face multiple challenges as she returns to the campaign trail seven years after losing the nomination in 2008 to Barack Obama. She has been a high-profile figure in American politics for more than two decades since her husband Bill won the presidency in 1992, and her fame still eclipses the other likely Democratic contenders and Republican opponents. She will try to get past a controversy over her use of personal email while Secretary of State and find a way to connect with ordinary Americans after her years as a top U.S. diplomat. After the announcement, she will travel to the early voting states of Iowa and New Hampshire, according to a source. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Shortly after beginning his first date with area woman Pauline Geary, smitten local man Brad Holtman told Onion reporters he couldn't believe that the woman was also a fan of the 1960s British rock band, The Beatles. We were just talking about music and she mentioned that she liked The Beatles, which is crazy because I love The Beatles, actually. Yeah, funny thing is, I was not really even looking forward to the date. Uh, I figured we get a drink or whatever, but it's turning out a lot cooler than I thought it was going to. I mean, she's just such a huge fan. She knows all the Beatles' names. She even owns some of their albums. I've been a Beatles fan since like sixth or seventh grade, so I don't want to get too excited and jump into something. So I think I'm going to ask her if she's ever seen The Godfather, which is probably my top five movies of all time. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited here to dial in toll-free and bring up what you want. 855-450-FREE is the number. 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Our Skype username here is lrn.fm. Joining you in studio, it's Ian. And Mark. Let's jump right into your calls and thoughts. Then coming up, one sheriff's department, at least one sheriff's department in Maine, has paid up to the terrorists. They've negotiated. They ponied up cash. Is my understanding the executive branch does not negotiate with terrorists? Well, we'll tell you under the circumstances where they will here in just a moment. But first, we go to your calls and thoughts. Emily is on the line. Listening in California, you're on Free Talk Live. Emily, or in Hawaii? I'm not sure where you are. Emily, go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm in California, but um, I was just uh, in Hawaii ah, a few okay. months ago, actually. You're on the air. Go ahead with your thoughts, please. Okay, so I'm just going to give um, a little background about Hawaii, um, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, so as you know, well, I mean, everyone should know now, but uh, Hawaii's government uh, was overthrown on uh, January 17th of 1893 by a small group of men, uh, most of them American. Um, uh, they were backed by American troops. Um, and it was pretty and, well bloodless, uh, as, right? Well, yeah. To um, the Queen of Hawaii, uh, she, it was quoted, uh, she quotes, uh, superior force of the United States of America. Right. I yelled my power under protest in order to avoid uh, bloodshed. Okay. But, but though, uh, I asked, well, why was this? And it, it was two uh, main reasons, and that is uh, Hawaiian sugar and Pearl Harbor. Those are the main two reasons. Yeah, Pearl Harbor is like a really big the port. Uh, well, yeah, Pearl Harbor, uh, the port is like yeah. a you know it's it's a wonderful port, and you can of course fly aircraft off of Hawaii too. So it's like a big giant aircraft carrier. 
Yes, and the United States at the time was afraid that uh, that Japan would have uh, invaded them. So that's why they went to Hawaii to, you know, conquer that land. But the thing, the, the huge issue right now with Hawaii is that people uh, are now waking up and they're realizing that <laughs> Hawaii, I mean, according to uh, its current status, um, back then, and well, actually now, to be honest, was a neutral, uh, sovereign, uh, sovereign uh, country. Mm-hmm. And a, a, a Kiri petition, that's what the Hawaiians call it, a petition um, a protested against the annexation of Hawaii. And uh, the people of Hawaii never voted to become a part of the United States. <laughs> In fact, the United States uh, refused to let the Native Hawaiians uh, actually vote on the issue. Yeah, it was uh, basically the Americans that were on Hawaii uh, got to vote in this. Do you think? Do you guys think that uh, the the land you're standing on right now ought to be a state? Well, yes, we do, and that's kind of how the vote went, right? <laughs> mm. um, yeah, the people who only voted was the military occupiers wow. and their families. Crazy. Yeah, I know we've yeah. we've heard about this before. Now, are you're saying that it's starting to change? You're you're saying there's an independence movement that has been growing there in Hawaii. I knew there was some sort of a secession movement there, uh, but I didn't know how well it was doing. Okay, well, so here's the thing. According to the United States Constitution, uh, only uh, it was um, the issue regarding Hawaii was passed by a joint uh, resolution of, of uh, Congress, uh, which is actually illegal because a joint uh, resolution. Uh, didn't have the authority beyond the borders of the 48 continuous states to, you know, legally set that that president. So, uh, according to international law, which uh, in 2001, both the United Nations and the International Court um, agreed, uh, well, actually, pretty much, you know, Hawaii is still a... um, a country under international law because of all the treaties. Hawaii actually say that again. I, I, I say that again. Did you just say that the international court said that Hawaii is still an own, its own independent country? Yeah, yeah. in two thousand and one, recently. Well, not recently, but well, kind of recently. Uh, in two thousand and one, uh, the United Nations and the international court, uh, the Hawaiians, uh, submitted uh, another petition to them. Uh, and testimonies and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, they actually brought this to the courts, and they both ruled that, the you know, the country, you know, Hawaii, the Hawaiian kingdom, uh, still exists. Hmm. And so recently, in 1994, that was a while back ago, uh, the so-called state of Hawaii asked, does the Hawaiian kingdom continue to uh, exist? And just this month, April 4th, uh, the court just recently ruled of Hawaii that the kingdom does exist. And, Which court um, ruled this? The Hawaiian court? Well, this was actually a, a state versus English. It was a, a, a landmark uh, case. Uh, the judge took, uh, you know, ju- judicial notice, um, you know, of the objection facts and, and laws that uh, concludes. Uh, the Hawaiian Kingdom uh, continues to exist. Uh, Just to be clear, I missed it. So, which world. which court determined that the Hawaiian Kingdom do- exists? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the um, how which court was it? It was the Hawaiian Court, actually. Oh, so no, I'm sorry. Right here, it was the State of Hawaii Immediate uh, Court of Appeals (ICA). Okay, so what is the significance of it? I mean, that's an interesting decision. Does that mean that people can now? in Hawaii, legally align themselves, you know, become Hawaiian citizens, if you will, and uh, extract themselves from the United States' as rule? What is what is your interpretation of that? Okay, well, at the moment, um, there's a huge uproar in Hawaii because uh, now, uh, you know, the United States is trying to, trying to build a, um, a telescope, a... Um, uh, what is it? How, how long is it? It's like, Some giant co- telescope full of taxpayer money. You've heard yeah, about this, Mark? Much. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> but you've heard about this? The... They, they like them out in uh, remote places because okay. of uh, ambient light, but I'm I'm curious as to which island it's on. 
So where's this information? Uh, where can we find this? What do we? Uh, what do you look for? I mean, where's the news source on this that we can? You know, you're saying Hawaii's in an uproar. Obviously, that's a long way away from New Hampshire. It wouldn't surprise me if we had not seen any of these news stories or headlines at all. Oh. So where does well, one find this? Well, actually, this is an interesting. Uh, here's where it gets a little bit more interesting. Um, it's not just happening in Hawaii. It actually, just recently, the San Francisco uh, plan to um, do rallies as well in Nevada. Los rallies Angeles, about Hawaii and, or rallies about their own state? For Hawaii, yeah. Okay. Huh. <laughs> and um, you, I, you can find this information because there's actually a um, – it's called a HawaiianKingdom.org uh, slash blog, and it um, – you know, it has all that information down there and, and so forth. But uh, Hawaii actually had embassies in, like, even in the U.S. The U.S. had an embassy in Hawaii. Uh, uh, if, how many countries? One, two, three, four, five, six, uh, about maybe 30 countries. The Hawaiian Hawaii Kingdom a blog, a weblog of the acting government of the Hawaiian Kingdom presently operating within the occupied state of the Hawaiian Islands. Yeah, who's in charge? Well, um, if I can pronounce his name correctly, it's, it's Hawaiian. I don't speak Hawaiian. Um, There's a chairman, it? David yeah. Kino Say, PhD, yeah, yeah. chairman of the Council of Regency, acting minister of the Interior. Emily, I got to say, it's fascinating. And we're going to, I think I'm going to look a little further into this. I appreciate the heads up. If you hear more, it sounds like you've got your ear to the ground on this one. Uh, if you hear more about developments, Please let us know. Thank you for the uh, the call tonight. You know, I wonder what uh, I wonder what the, the the viewpoint politically is of the Hawaiian Kingdom. You know, are they uh, a dictatorship? Is this a kingdom that's just kind of loose and easy? Are they just going to kick back and smoke a big blunt on the uh, on the beach? I like that I mean, kingdom. Yeah, I mean, how's it going to work out for the kingdom if they can actually wrest power away from the U.S. government? Yeah, Will I Hawaii wonder, be more free? I really wonder if you can uh, turn this, you know, something like this back into a monarchy, and how strong would that monarchy be? Monarchies have had taken all different shapes throughout the years. Would it just be a sort of a titular head? Yeah, when was the newest monarchy settled? And what about all the Hawaiians that currently hold state government positions and federal government? positions 855 450 free you can share your thoughts with us on free talk live warning if you've recently declared bankruptcy you're going to want to change the station because there's an alternative to bankruptcy and it's faster than you'd ever think possible but if you've already declared bankruptcy and have missed this opportunity you'll want to change the station now here it is right now the company that has resolved more credit card debt than anyone in the u.s is available to settle your debt too you may reduce your debt with one low monthly program payment if you call right now freedom debt relief will show you how low your monthly program payment could be for free call now 1-800-399-1993 that's 1-800-399-1993 if you're struggling with debt this could be your answer and the bigger your debt the more money you could save to find out for free how much of your hard-earned money Freedom Debt Relief could help you save, call now. 1-800-399-1993. 1-800-399-1993. 1-800-399-1993. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance. From the Industrial Age to the Space Age. Gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Never ever send a follow up email asking, Did you get my email? 
Email 101, if it didn't bounce back undeliverable, it got where you sent it. And avoid transmedia pestering, like calling to ask, did you get my email? Or emailing to say, I left you a voicemail. If your emails and voicemails aren't being acknowledged, your problem isn't technology, it's technique. Is your message concise and understandable? Have you boiled it down to seem as relevant as possible to the recipient? In other words, is it the opposite of spam or junk mail? All of this really matters if you're a job seeker. But even if you're not, with money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free. Join us here on the radio. Talk about anything you want to discuss. It is the live uh, Sunday edition of the program. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We were just talking with a gentleman on the line about the independence movement in Hawaii. Uh, the movement to bring about, once again, the Hawaiian kingdom, which they say never really went away. Uh, at least they, uh, the gentleman that was on the lo- a line a moment ago, I th- excuse me, Lady Emily was, uh, was her name. Uh, Emily was saying that uh, there has been some sort of court decision. We've yet to verify the claim. I haven't had the chance to do enough research to make sure that that's actually true, that the government, the U.S. government's own court or the Hawaiian government's own courts have acknowledged that the Hawaiian kingdom is still in effect to some extent. As I understood what was just said to me a moment ago, which if that's true, then that's wonderful news the way I see it. I Anything that can further the aim of the idea of independence for uh, different places in the world, secession, decentralizing governments, decentralizing control. I support that. And uh, so what ramifications a court decision like that will ultimately have uh, has yet to really be uh, determined, but I'm interested in learning more as time certainly goes on. But I want to tell you about the Pocket Power Plus. It is A breakthrough in portable power technology. It's the Pocket Power Plus, and it can run your electronic devices for hours and even days if you need to. It can also deliver an enormous supply of on-demand power. It has a full accessory pack with most of the adapters that you might need, including jumper cables, because this thing is so powerful that in some circumstances it can actually jumpstart a car. Sounds crazy, but it's not. The Pocket Power Plus becomes your own personal mini power plant, and Free Talk Live listeners can get Pocket Power Plus for half price by going to pocketpowerplus9.com. That's pocketpowerplus9.com. And use coupon code FTL and you'll save even more. That's coupon code FTL like Free Talk Live. Once again, go to pocketpowerplus9.com. So uh, we're talking about this Hawaiian Kingdom situation, and the caller gave a blog, which is called hawaiiankingdom.org slash blog, and just figured I'd jump over here and take a look and see what sort of posts they have up. The first post claims that they've got 50,000 petition signatures. Yeah. Uh, I just posted that up on our Facebook and Twitter. 
50,000 petition signatures supporting Mauna Kea protectors and the Hawaiian kingdom. The Native Americans of the United States has been, since apparently 2012, pushing, think they mean have been, uh, since 2012, pushing for the American imperialists to vacate the illegal occupation of Hawaii. The Chickasaw, with this battle being led by Emily Dykes, has, who may be the person we were just speaking with. I believe so. Uh, has finally started the or fi- submitted the 50,000 signatures by all the people of Hawaii. In addition to this, Emily has submitted a second petition with 50,000 signatures nationwide. One of the U.S. occupiers refused to tell us his name, but he had to comment on this issue. Below is the following transcription. Sir, do you wish to comment? If so, please tell us your name. No, this is America. Hawaii is part of America. This is what I was taught. I'm sick of you flaming liberals and stupid commies trying to destroy our country. We just actually uh, saw some people commenting in a similar manner on this story, which is very disturbing. This person goes on to say, I have the First Amendment right to not tell you my name. Like 9-11, I don't care what the evidence says. This is the greatest country in the world. We have freedom unlike all the rest. We in the United States Armed Forces do not deserve to be treated like this. And if I were you, I'd be careful who you talk to. You are a traitor who needs to be executed. All of you. And how dare you say you support science. I don't know uh, what the circumstance was behind this particular encounter. Yeah, but it sounds, it sounds like a rant. But I would like to see it on video. Uh, I would like to see the uh, the evidence for this particular encounter. I don't deny that there are people who think that way. Uh, it would just be more persuasive to actually see an encounter like that happen than have to read about it uh, on a blog. I'm not saying I'm you know denying whether it happened or not, but it's easier to prove if it's happening on on a camera. Um, the toll free number here tonight is eight fifty five four fifty free. Astrophysicist behind the project like Hawaiian Paul Cole continues the blog, say science and the sacred don't have to oppose one another. As the U.S. occupiers walk away and got back in their military vehicles to continue rolling down the streets, he continued to yell, quote, I do not wish to comment on this issue anymore. If you attempt to overthrow us, we will kill all of you traitors. I don't care if you have Russia and China or whatever helping you finding, uh, fight your, so, your so-called revolution. Our country is the strongest, the best, and we can defeat anyone like we did yep. in World War One and World War Two. Yeah, that's the solution. Uh, by the way, the United States did practically nothing in World War One. <laughs> mm. um, the and, and by the way, in World War Two, really, the United States was not the deciding factor uh, as far as defeating Germany. That was a conflict between Germany and uh, Russia, really, much more so. Um, this is really the co- the the concept of the war hawk, right? Yeah. If you disagree with me, I will kill you. I cannot stand somebody with another opinion, and ultimately, all they can do is kill each other, right? Like if they actually acted on the the uh, bluster that they um you know they purport, because this guy isn't gonna crush a grape, right? <laughs> you know, he he wouldn't go boo to a to a dachshund. Um, he just yammering on. Yeah, you're right. The United States military would probably Probably come in and crush any kind of armed rebellion amongst the Hawaiians. This so far isn't an armed rebellion. It's somebody who has a different opinion than you, sir. And if you, your solution to somebody who has a different opinion than you is guns and bombs That's and That's what death, the government solution always is. You are a psychopath. Yes. Uh, deserving that, of prison. That, deserve, uh, that pretty much describes the government as it stands, psychopathic. According to HawaiianKingdom.org, so the site is uh, citing itself here, occupation does not legally change the national character of the occupied territory. As such, the laws of the Hawaiian Kingdom, as they existed previous to the failed revolution of 1893, continue to remain the law of the land. Uh, According to the Hawaiian Civil Code, quote, the laws are obligatory upon all persons, whether subjects of this kingdom or citizens or subjects of any foreign state while within the limits of this kingdom, except so far as exception is made by the laws of nations, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, uh, going on here, many of the gatherings are being spurred by social media. That's how it spreads so quickly, said uh, Española. Just thank goodness for Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. More rallies are being planned in places like uh, Georgia, Massachusetts, New Mexico, even uh, rallies in New Zealand, apparently, as well in Germany. According to, uh, let's see, Española, organizers are planning more rallies and that will also likely be the case in Hawaii itself. Quote, our people are not going to stand back. We are going to continue to move forward. This is our country. International law says so, too. They apologize to us and then they threaten us. 
and they link to a document that claims 50,000 signatures. I haven't actually read that yet uh, as to what you know is uh, contained within that particular petition that allegedly has the signatures. The site's a little disjointed. It's a little hard to uh, to, to kind of follow what's going on, but I, I admit I'm new uh, to the site, and there really isn't that much to it. Their website, hawaiiankingdom.org slash blog. It seems like a good start. I mean, if if all of that is true and all of those things are happening, it seems like it's a it's a good you know foot planted in the ground sort of thing. And you know what are they going to move ahead with, and where is this going to go from here? And get video. If you've got these jingoist, military, violent people threatening you and screaming at you and shouting at you and threatening you, then uh, definitely you should get that on video and post that to the blog. It's Free Talk Live. By now, you may have heard a bit about Bitcoins, but did you know Bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept Bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning Bitcoins or trying to make money in the Bitcoin market, you've got to know BidBit.co. Why? Because BidBit.co is where you can easily receive Bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for Bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction auction your products and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and free to bid at BidBit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. BidBit.co. Free Talk Live. That's all libertarians are saying is let's stop the violence. And really, when you put it in those terms, it sounds kind of liberal. Let's stop the violence. Sure, right? it's, a, it's a movement about peace and personal responsibility. That could very easily sound like, uh, when you use the word peace, sounds liberal. You know? Right. So if the first libertarian you ever meet or hear on the radio is just talking about making government smaller, I can totally understand why you would get confused and think that it, you know, just a bunch of ultra-right wingers. That's one of the reasons why I kind of shy away from labeling myself that way. Often we get terms like radical used towards us, mm-hmm. but... Uh, radical, really? Peace, personal responsibility, voluntary interaction between individuals? That's radical? I'll tell you what's radical. Radical's using a gun and a bunch of guys in, in armored suits with helmets to enforce your will on people. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Thanks to Bitcoin, LRN.FM is able to provide our free-to-air satellite channel across North and Central America. You can listen to LRN.FM 24-7 via satellite for no monthly cost. Learn more about our satellite channel at sat.lrn.fm. And if you'd like to help us continue to expand, you can send us Bitcoins via the address you'll find under the Bitcoin graphic in the right column of LRN.FM. To learn more about Bitcoin, visit weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. 
Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want here. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. 855-450-3733. Join us online. Drop on by freetalklive.com, please. And enjoy the features waiting for you there. Once again, that's freetalklive.com. Tonight with you here, it's Ian. And Mark. We're going to talk about the police giving in to the demands of the terrorists. Yeah, that's right. They talk real tough in the executive branch about how they don't like to, uh, and they don't, they say, negotiate with terrorists. But apparently they don't consider hackers to be terrorists because what happened in Maine, according to the Portland Press Herald, is that police departments in Midcoast and Northern Maine, so more than one department, has said they have paid the ransom to a Mm. group of hackers to keep their, or at least one hacker, to keep their computer files from being destroyed, according to WCSH-TV, uh, the Portland station said the Lincoln County Sheriff's Office and four towns paid $300 to the hackers after a virus called a mega code was downloaded on a computer system that they share. Lincoln County Sheriff Todd Brackett said the computer system was unusable until the fee was paid. <laughs> and the hackers claimed that the program called Ransomware would wipe the entire computer system clean if the fee wasn't paid. The creator of the virus gave the sheriff's office a code to unlock the computer system after the money was received. And get this, the county paid the fine, or the, the fee, the fine, the county pay, paid the extraction in Bitcoin. Yes, yeah, that's pretty much how it's done. Uh, which, of course, for those of you who don't know, Bitcoin is a decentralized currency not issued by any government or any bank, meaning that a payment made in Bitcoin to an address, uh, you don't necessarily know who holds that address. So the uh, the criminals, if you will, who took control of this particular computer system, some would say the heroes who took control of the computer system, they sent this— I'm uh, not willing to go that far. I, I don't know, man. I don't necessarily oppose— Kind of throwing a monkey wrench into the system. I I don't you know as long as the government's going to aggress against people, I don't shed a tear when somebody uh, breaks one of their systems. I don't want to see violence happen. I don't want to see people get hurt. But if a system gets taken down, eh, that's fine with me. I, you know, if somebody does it for a principled reason, um, like I remember the the '80s movie Wisdom, where he started off doing arson for the purposes of, uh, you know making sure that people's mortgages, farmers' mortgages were burned up or something like that. But then he started to need money, right? And then it got to be much more of a bank robbing scheme than a uh, sort of power to the people kind of scheme. And I think that that's where this all sort of, you know, (laughs) the the wheels came off. These people weren't trying to, uh, you know, they weren't trying to dismantle the government and make it so that uh, you know the government you know got a message about serving the people rather than their own interests and blah blah blah. They just said give us some Bitcoin and they turned back over the uh, the the reins of power back yeah. to the government. Yeah, so that's true. screw these hackers <laughs> and screw all that crap that you were just talking. Well, yeah, but on the other hand, I mean, you, you gotta you gotta hand it to somebody when they can pull one over on the biggest gang. It's amusing. To, yeah, known I'm to amused. mankind. And, you know, one of the reasons why you're not supposed to negotiate with terrorists, which, by the way, I, I fully support the idea of them negotiating with some terrorists. Like, you know, if they kidnap somebody, I don't have a problem with them, uh, you know, ponying up rather than continuing to warmonger and continuing to uh, basically create reasons for the terrorists to do the things that they do. I think that this really shows some hypocrisy because— it's totally fine, apparently, for the executive branch to uh, to pay some money out to get their own files back yes. from somebody. But to get human beings back, then that's when they stand firm. We will not negotiate with terrorists. This just We are just not doing that. That's not acceptable. <laughs> well, apparently human life is less valuable to these people than their file system. And I think that really shows 
their priorities. But it's amusing that, uh, you know, what is probably one person, this is probably not a group of hackers, it's probably just one guy, uh, what one guy managed to do, or a group of people managed to do to pull the wool over the eyes of this police department, they got the best of them. And how they breached the system, I would like to know that too. What what was it that they used? Did they manage to get some officer to open up a fake porn program or something like that that uploaded a Trojan horse that gave them access to the internals of that network, the computer network? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Yeah, so what, what did they use to gain access? Because there are obviously a different levels of attack, different ways to kind of come at that problem. But they had more than one department pony up. According to the story here, let's go to Jeff in Elgin, Illinois. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Hello, Jeff. Hi, you guys. I have a couple hey. questions about the uh, Hawaiian situation. Um, one thing is I smell a tax-free zone, uh, maybe a tax haven there. People might be wanting to go to Hawaii for uh, certain kinds of tourism, uh, tax tourism, mm -hmm. maybe also um, maybe medical tourism if they can get away from some of the Marxist ideas like people go down to Tijuana now for cancer therapies. Uh, then also I had a question about maybe maybe those folks in the uh, royal Hawaiian royal family down, down there can get a casino or something, you know, might be a, an idea for them while they're doing all this stuff. I'd be surprised that they wouldn't get a casino. They would, wouldn't have a casino already, mm -hmm. but, um, you know. Yes, it would be. The, if a casino would likely be some of the first-line payoffs for pe these people um, in the hopes that they exactly. would uh, give up their uh, hopes of Shut independence. Up. I would Get not <laughs> look to see uh, Hawaii be somehow a tax haven uh, for tax tourism or anything like that. And the reason I would imagine that so is, is because when the Free State Project began looking at uh, the 10 states from which they would choose, they exempted the two two uh, least populated states from their list. And one of them was Rhode Island because of corruption. And the other one was Hawaii, basically because it's just so big government liberal. So I would say that uh, that's not going anywhere, but it's not going to change the fact that it's a beautiful place with a lot of resources. Sure. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate your call tonight. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. The medical tourism thing certainly is a, you know, it's, it's a fine idea, but I got to wonder, um, you know, I, I guess... You know, why if you if you can go to Thailand or you can go to uh, you know Tijuana, why would you go to Hawaii? But maybe I'm wrong. You know, it's a nice place. So the Portland station said the Lincoln County Sheriff's Office in four towns paid three hundred dollars, and I presume that means three hundred dollars a piece to the hackers after this virus locked down their system. The uh, the Damas Damariscada police chief Ron Young said, "quote." We needed our programs to get back online. This was a choice we all discussed and took to get back online, to get our information. Yeah. So this was a really urgent situation. They really needed to go ahead and do what was being demanded of them, which means that anyone else can waltz on in there who's got the skills and uh, and access this system and, and upload a similar virus. In fact, if these guys were smart, and I don't doubt they are, the hackers, that is, because uh, the police IT departments are likely very, very lacking compared to the abilities of the, the hackers on the internet. If these guys are smart, there'll be a time, uh, like a counter, time bomb. <laughs> yeah, in this uh, system that they have, whatever the the crack is or the, the hack that they've uploaded into their system, that they punched in this code, right? Okay, well we'll give you this code and that'll unlock your files. Well, who's to say? that the program itself has cleared out of the system and that it won't just go ahead and lock the files again in another three months, you know, or Why something Why would they like wait that. three months? Or another month or whatever. It's like, okay, well, now you're going to pay $500 uh, and you will, will then unlock your files for another couple of months. <laughs> well, I, yeah, <laughs> I Just would, keep milking it until they figure out how to get rid of the thing. It ought to be, uh, they ought to do it every week or something. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know. At that point, the bitcoins are paid. Nothing can change anything when it comes to the uh, the bitcoins getting paid. Um, they're they're gone. There's no there's no chargebacks. This isn't a credit card. And this is one thing that I've got to ask you, Ian. Is, is I don't know what kind of research you've done on this, but according to this, Brackett told WCSH that the FBI tracked the payment to a Swiss bank account. That's what it says here later in the story. Um, how they figured that out? I'm so not these, sure. Apparently, these hackers are not very smart because they didn't wash their coins, or this is a lie. Hmm. 
Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe, yeah, it's certainly true that the, uh, the FBI has been known to tell lies. 855-450 freeze the number. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read chapter one at survivormax.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right, General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right, that's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows you can't afford to wait so call 866-91-STEEL lock in your price now call 866-91-STEEL that's 866-917-8335 are you getting squeezed by the economic downturn hey you were doing fine then all of a sudden you're having a tough time paying your family's credit card bills maybe you were downsized or even lost a job but you still owe 10 grand or more in credit card bills and you just can't afford the minimum payments anymore we're here to help we are the genesis debt partners we know the secrets to negotiate better terms with your creditors make a free 10-minute call right now and learn how we can help you get out of debt 800-981-7590 if you owe 10 grand or more in credit card debt and you want to learn how you can pay less and get out of debt faster, call right now. 800-981-7590. 800-981-7590. Get out of debt now. 800-981-7590. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, Ian here. And Mark. Join us online. Drop by freetalklive.com. If you appreciate the work that we do here, then one of the things you can do is shop with us. I meant to mention this earlier when we had Jacob Hornberger on. You want to check out his new book? Buy it through Amazon with our discount, or not our discount code, but it's uh, it's our 
affiliate code. Uh, you enter through, you get the same great Amazon prices. You enter through our affiliate links over at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com, Amazon UK, Canada, and US. You just click into the right Amazon for you, and Free Talk Live gets a cut of the purchase price. So, once again, shop. Dot freetalklive.com. Syphase, listening in San Francisco. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Hey, I just wanted to call in about the virus you guys are talking about. Yeah, please. Yeah, so um, I think you sort of have an incorrect impression about how it works. Uh, the way you've been talking about it makes it sound like the police department was targeted. And no, I don't I think so. Highly yeah, and uh, I highly doubt that the people who are operating this virus have any idea who necessarily is being infected. The way this works mm. is they send out the viruses in, like, you know, spam emails or on some shadier website. And basically, people download the files thinking it's, you know, it's a document from a colleague or something like that. Right. And then the virus ends up being installed on the system. And there are actually several different versions of these viruses. And what they do basically is once they are on your system, they encrypt all your files. And then they remove the encryption key from your system so that the only place it exists is on the servers mm. of the people operating the virus. And then you have to pay usually between three to five hundred dollars in Bitcoin to be able to get the key back. That's unless so, you actually, you know, have a backup system in place where Well, I mean yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, if I mean, you've actually if got you an IT back. department worth their salt, uh, or yeah. even the most rudimentary of backup systems where you're well, on a semi regular basis backing your files up, you could then just simply format the machines in question and reinstall, you know, whatever operating system and then back your files up, right? Like, you don't have to pay the ransom unless you well, are I not mean, prepared. Certain, yeah, so certainly if you have a backup, then you don't need to decrypt the files. But to decrypt the files, you do have to get the key. And so you, you have to pay because if, yeah, I mean, this encryption is unbreakable. But right. actually, it really depends on how your backup works. So there are situations where... If you have a certain kind of backup where the backup files are accessible from the infected computer, yeah. it can even encrypt the backup files. And that's actually happened. There was actually a story last year about a law firm where they did have backups, but the backups were accessible from the infected computer. Mm -hmm. And so the entire file system and all the backups of this law firm were encrypted, and they actually ended up losing all their files. Wow. Which I, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but I wouldn't be surprised if they went out of business because you know all their legal documents, client files, everything was gone. That's a brutal story. Sideface, thanks for clearing that up for us. So what you're saying is the department probably wasn't targeted specifically. It was probably just some gullible uh, police employee who clicked on some well, yeah, kind of and I mean, email. And lots of different organizations have been affected. There are quite a few police departments and other law enforcement agencies that have been infected with the virus. And actually, in this particular case, uh, you, you were saying how it's four different agencies. But the reason it affected those four is because they're actually using a single system because they're all in the same area. Right. So it was actually okay. one system that was encrypted and just uh, affected these four different agencies. Wow. But yeah, right. I mean, these viruses are all over the place. I mean, it's not just. It's, I mean, anybody can get it. It could be you know, a business. It could be just some person who opens a spam email. Yeah, it's not hard to and, get sloppy. I mean, if you're not paying close attention to the emails that are coming in, there is a chance you could download something that contains a virus and try to launch it. So. I, I helped somebody get some Bitcoins to basically un, to take care of this. You know? Really? And it's, uh, yeah, I did. And Sideface, have you ever heard of any of these uh, hijackers who will just come back a few months later and, you know, re-encrypt the files and ask for another ransom? Or do they seem to be, like, not, legit? Not they... specifically. I mean, certainly it's possible for you to be infected twice independently. That's a possibility, I suppose. But well, right, the virus itself you know, isn't going to... 
the virus itself isn't going to erase itself from the system necessarily, right? Like just because you've put well, in the code that the, uh, the the hacker provides to free up your files, that virus is still there until you clean it out. Well, it, it does seem like they have been being, I mean, it's strange to use the word honest, but yeah. they have been being honest. <laughs> They've honored their agreement. If you do pay, they will clear it. And of course, the reason they do that is, you know, if they started going back on their word, people would stop paying them because mm. they would, you know, not have the expectation of getting their files back. I suppose that makes so sense. People yeah. who have paid have been getting their files back. And I mean, these people have been raking it in, actually. Um, these days, they're only using cryptocurrency. I mean, not crypto. they're only using Bitcoin. But back when they first started, they were accepting Bitcoin and also, um, I can't remember what it was called, but it was some sort of like payment card thing. I, I think it was money back. Mm -hmm. And there were stories of like people would go to a store because they were infected to try and buy a money pack card. And the employees there would say, you know, it's really weird. We've had so many people coming in lately to get these cards that we don't have any more in stock. You know, so I mean, this just sort of exploded on the scene and it's hitting a lot of people. I mean, these guys are making, you know, just... Well I, I hope that Several Bitcoin gets wide dollars. adoption. I hope it doesn't get wide adoption this way. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. like, I really hate that, that yeah, this might happen to somebody. Yeah, it's kind of a bad impression, you know, like, oh, here's the first time I heard about Bitcoin was when my files were encrypted. Yeah, when I got robbed. I bucks to get them back. <laughs> Jeez. Thanks, SciFace, for the call. I appreciate sure. the info. The toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. The Holton Police Department in Maine told the station that it was hit with a similar virus, a virus earlier this week, and its computer system was locked up until a ransom was paid. The uh, last summer, FBI, foreign governments, and private security firms dismantled an operation based in Russia that commandeered as many as a million computers and drew money out of bank accounts. Said the Washington Post, the operation also included a ransomware scheme, and officials said they identified— That's what this is, ransomware. Correct. The 30-year-old Russian behind the operation, but had not apprehended him. Mm. So He's, He must be raking it in. Yeah. So, I mean, how do you prevent this from happening to you? Well, I mean, it seems basic, right? But don't download files that you don't know the source. Don't download something from an email unless you know the person who sent it to you. And further, if you want extra security, you are expecting them to send it to you. Because it's possible that the person who sent that to you has themselves been violated by some kind of a virus. And one of those viruses could very well go through the email address list that that person has, send an email. Send you a little love letter. Yeah, send an email out to you saying... Hey, Mark, I was thinking about you today, and I wrote you this poem or yep. whatever. And then here, click this downloadable thing. And people that don't know what they're doing, uh, you know, they might download executable code, which is a, a program, thinking it's a document or something like that. And from what I understand, there can even be macros embedded into documents. I don't know a lot about that side of things. I don't know if a Trojan can be embedded into a document, but I've heard bad things about certain macros, which are sort of a pre-programmed series of commands that could be somehow loaded into like a Microsoft doc file. So again, you I'm not really a big fan of uh, clicking on anything in an email. Yeah. Um, and people send me stuff all the time. Hey, take a look at this. Uh, right. Like, you know, I mean, yeah. they're trying to send me a news story and we have a system for that at freetalklive.com. But I appreciate anybody trying to help me out with the news stories and those sorts of things, but I'm not clicking on your crap. No, you can type it out. You can cut and paste it, but I'm not clicking on it. Not going to click on it because I don't know. So that's, I think, would be rule number one. If you've got any other tips for how to avoid getting in this situation in the first place, and I liked SciFace's point that if your backup system is connected all the time to your computer, then there's a chance that one of these ran ransomwares will be able to encrypt that, which means that if your backup is encrypted... Can you imagine? You are as good as done at that point. You, do every you try to do everything right... And still, it gets you because yeah. your backup is, you know, backs up. No system is perfect. No. Nope. Uh, and, and there's always going to be some sort of a flaw. Just hopefully that's the flaw that won't be uh, exploited <laughs> by the, uh, the hackers. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. You can join us here uh, online as well over at freetalklive.com. We've got Skype. You can Skype into us at Skype username LRN.FM. Coming up. 
Another computer-related story. This one, an eighth grader who's been charged with a felony for a simple computer prank. Something that was less serious than what I did when I was in high school. It's Free Talk Live. (laughs) Warning. If you've recently declared bankruptcy, you're going to want to change the station. Because there's an alternative to bankruptcy, and it's faster than you'd ever think possible. But if you've already declared bankruptcy and have missed this opportunity, you'll want to change the station now. Here it is. Right now, the company that has resolved more credit card debt than anyone in the U.S. is available to settle your debt, too. You may reduce your debt with one low monthly program payment. If you call right now, Freedom Debt Relief will show you how low your monthly program payment could be for free. Call now. 1-800-399-1993. That's 1-800-399-1993. If you're struggling with debt, this could be your answer. And the bigger your debt, the more money you could save. To find out for free how much of your hard-earned money Freedom Debt Relief could help you save, call now. 1-800-399-1993. 1-800-399-1993. 1-800-399-1993. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read chapter one at SurvivorMax.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, April 12th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.51 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,208 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $238. Antiwar.com reports meeting Friday night at a summit in Panama, President Obama and Cuban President Raul Castro shook hands in what was the first direct meeting between the two nations' heads of state in over 50 years. It's an historic encounter, but more important is what it represents, the very real chance of rapprochement between the two countries and an end to half a century of U.S. economic embargoes. The next big step in that direction would be the removal of Cuba from the U.S. list of state sponsors of terrorism. There was never much real evidence to support that listing, but this is the first time in decades the matter has ever been under real consideration, with the U.S. State Department reporting to have endorsed the removal. Progress in such removals is often dependent on political conveniences at any given time, and U.S. officials are said to be pressing Cuba for guarantees on diplomatic access, something obviously totally unrelated to terror, in return for their removal. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit BitcoinNotBombs.com. UPI reports following a Justice Department report alleging sexual misconduct among DEA agents, Attorney General Eric Holder warned DOJ employees that soliciting prostitutes is a violation of policy, whether on or off duty. In a letter released to DOJ staff on Friday, Holder wrote, I want to reiterate to all department personnel, including attorneys and law enforcement officers, that they are prohibited from soliciting, procuring, or accepting commercial sex. Holder wrote in the letter, this rule applies at all 
multiple times during an individual's employment, including while off-duty or on personal leave, and applies regardless of whether the activity is legal or tolerated in a particular jurisdiction, foreign or domestic. The caution comes two weeks after a report that found several Drug Enforcement Administration agents had sex parties with prostitutes that were hired by drug cartels. Justice Department Inspector General Michael Horowitz found 10 agents, most of whom had top-secret security clearances, had engaged in the parties with prostitutes because it was the local culture. Seven of the 10 agents admitted to being at the parties, most of which took place on U.S. government leased properties. Many of those implicated in the report received minor disciplinary action. The Washington Post reported Holder and Deputy Attorney General Sally Yates have reviewed the report and concluded the disciplinary process at the DEA was inadequate. Holder's letter hints at increased oversight for employees and supervisors. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Hillary Clinton is expected to announce her second run for the presidency on Sunday, starting her campaign as the Democrats' best hope for fending off a crowded field of lesser-known Republican rivals and retaining the White House. The overwhelming favorite for the Democratic presidential nomination, Hillary will nonetheless face multiple challenges as she returns to the campaign trail seven years after losing the nomination in 2008 to Barack Obama. She has been a high-profile figure in American politics for more than two two decades since her husband Bill won the presidency in 1992, and her fame still eclipses the other likely Democratic contenders and Republican opponents. She will try to get past a controversy over her use of personal email while Secretary of State and find a way to connect with ordinary Americans after her years as a top U.S. diplomat. After the announcement, she will travel to the early voting states of Iowa and New Hampshire, according to a source. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. A report by Stanford University researchers released Thursday found that Americans spend 90% of their waking hours staring at glowing rectangles. Researchers identified more than 30 varieties of iridescent rectangles, ranging from personal and work rectangles to rectangles that heat food and those that can fit right in one's pocket. From the moment Americans wake up, they are uh, captivated by these bright, uh, pulsing rectangles. Uh, in fact, if you look at the data, um, it's hard to find a single minute when the public isn't uh, captivated by these, excuse me. Um, I'm sorry, where were we? In local news, a runover squirrel is remembered as frantic and indecisive. And in other news, a trail of rose petals leads a wife to a sink full of dishes. Prince Fielder reports to spring training exactly the right amount overweight, and a local yard sale reeks of divorce. If you don't hear the sound of my voice the same time next week, alert my family and then visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is Free Talk Live. You are invited here to take control of the airwaves. 855 450 Freeze. We launch into the third hour of this live Sunday edition of the program. So far tonight, we had Jacob Hornberger on talking about a alleged military industrial complex coup in the United States back in the uh, JFK assassination days. And uh, also talked about uh, Hawaii. One of the callers suggested there's. Uh, there's quite the uh, the revolution going on there, not necessarily an open bloody one, but suggesting that legally there may be the possibility that the Kingdom of Hawaii might come back. It's an interesting theory, and yeah. uh, I'm interested in hearing more as that situation continues to develop. Plus, you don't, you don't hear about new monarchies every day. Yeah, plus police departments in Maine have paid up a ransom to what's called ransomware, uh, where the ha hackers, if you will, put together a, a virus. The virus gets... Infecting in a, to a computer system, it encrypts the files there and then demands a Bitcoin payment of approximately four or $500 worth of uh, Bitcoin. 
and then we'll unlock the file system on uh, the computers. And law enforcement agencies have been ponying up on this. Hundreds of dollars. Uh, SciFace called in to say that these hackers may be making millions of dollars off of this scheme because it just hits anybody who's unwitting. Uh, so you can share your thoughts. And also, maybe you're a, a technologist kind of person. You have some suggestions that are maybe even better than what I basically suggested earlier about making sure that you're very cautious about the emails that uh, with attachments that you open. So, Well, one of the things that concerns me is, is that the when it comes to security, you don't want to store all your files on the cloud. No, but certainly Leo, not. Leo, support, uh, Leo Laporte uh, from you know Twit this week in tech suggests that you have three, two, one, and one thing. The one is you have one offsite backup of your uh, of your files. But I wouldn't put my stuff on the cloud necessarily because then the government, uh, through Google or whomever you're backing up through Carbonite or whomever, has access to your files. Well, you could always encrypt them on the cloud if you wanted to. That would give you is some easy? layer of security. Well, no, no. Generally, encryption is not necessarily a, a one-step process. You have to typically go through some kind of a, um, you know, your own process on that. When it comes to encrypting files, there are different methods of file encryption. There are programs that claim to provide encryption, but I wouldn't trust them necessarily, right? So if if you have some kind of cloud storage service, let's let's say Google, and I don't know, I don't even know if Google uh, claims to offer this, but I would I'd imagine there are some of these cloud services that claim, well, we'll encrypt your files. Well, the question is, are they keeping the key on their computers? Because then that doesn't sound particularly encrypted. Well. No, no, no. They're, they're encrypting the it's, files. It's encrypted. It's just not safe. <laughs> right. I mean, Ross Ulbricht allegedly had his files encrypted on his computer, but then had the key lying out there in the open. Yeah. So, well, it's all he had to do is close his laptop, but... Well, no, but what happened was... Okay, so Mark, what you're talking about is Ross Ulbricht, the guy who was uh, the founder of the Silk Road. He's maybe going to prison for the rest of his life. Sentencing is coming up in uh, in May. Silk Road being the most infamous underground marketplace. So he had different levels of encryption on his laptop. There was this sort of system-wide encryption. Mm -hmm. And that was what would have engaged had he had the time to close his laptop. The system-wide encryption would have engaged. It would have been then very, very difficult for the government to get in. Okay, But he, because that was open, they then had access to whatever files were on that laptop that they themselves were not encrypted. So he could have had and did have an encrypted file within that file system, right? So the file system was encrypted, right. but that was decrypted when his laptop was open. And within that, he had another file that was like super secret stuff. The super secret file that he had there was the information about his cohorts, the scanned documents, the uh, driver's license scans that identified the people with whom he had hired to uh, to perform tasks on the Silk Road. And it was that key the key to that file that he just had on his laptop. Mm. So ultimately, he left the key out in the open because the laptop itself was decrypted. So the file that they ultimately got into was encrypted on an encrypted laptop. So that key should have been on a fob somewhere, which he likely would have had with him when he was doing the work anyway. There's a chance of that. I don't, yeah. I mean, there, there could have been another level of security there that might have kept that information safe. But, you know, again, even some of the people who know their stuff will make mistakes. And all it takes is one mistake for you to uh, have that advantage to be exploited. 855-450, freeze the toll-free number. So, again, if you've got uh, better suggestions on how to keep safe online, would love to hear them. I certainly am not the end-all, be-all of that discussion. In other news, and this rings true and close to home for me, Mark, this story uh, from the Countercurrent News. Countercurrentnews.com just came out uh, yesterday, actually today. Eighth grader has been charged with a felony. For a simple computer prank, a middle school student has been charged with a felony for what he explains was no more than a prank against his teacher. Dominic Green is an eighth grader at Paul, middle, Paul R. Smith Middle School. He explains that he only intended to perform the prank on a teacher that he didn't like, but now he's being charged with a cyber crime that carries a felony penalty. The charges came Wednesday after law enforcement claimed that he hacked into his school's secure computer network. The Pasco County Sheriff's Office said the charges against Dominic include an offense. Pasco, Florida? Uh, I'm jumping to a conclusion that there. I don't know much if there are any other Pasco counties out there. I'm sure there is. Uh, Dominic Green is his, is his name, although Dominic is spelled D-O-M-A-N-I-K, if you want to look it up. 
Pasco County Sheriff's Office said the charges against Green include an offense against a computer system and unauthorized access. Sheriff Chris Noko said Green logged onto the school's network back on March 31st without permission. Noko said on Thursday that Green used an administrative level password to gain access. Well, how did the young man get that password? Once inside, he changed the background image on a teacher's personal computer to one showing two men kissing. And that was it. For this so-called crime, Green is being slapped with a felony. The sheriff said that one of the computers he accessed had encrypted 2014 FCAT questions. That's some Florida assessment test. Yeah. Stored on it, but the sheriff and the school agree that Green never viewed nor tampered with those files. So why was it even mentioned? Well, to make Green's prank seem more nefarious than it was, says CountercurrentNews.com. Even though some might say this was just a teenage prank, who knows what this teenager might have done? Noko justified. We'll come back with this here in a moment. There's more to the story, uh, and I'll tell you how it relates, because I've been there. Let's go first to Gene, listening in Detroit. Gene, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello there. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey, Gene. Um, last week, maybe Thursday, uh, you guys were talking about the teachers in Atlanta going to jail for helping or for changing the tests. Uh, answers on on some statewide exams. Yeah, teachers and administrators. It was uh, all the almost all the way to right. the top. Well, I, and at the time, I think Ian, you and maybe the others in the in studio were saying that you know kids were being harmed by this. But I would argue that based that's assuming that a the state curriculum is good and b that the state test is good. I don't know if I said kids were I, being harmed. I yeah, don't I don't know. That. I mean, I'm thinking about this and I'm trying to see what necessarily the harm is. The harm comes from the the government school system in the first place. Right. I mean, but I was argue, I'd argue that it might be best for the kids because a lot of the good teachers don't want to teach to the test. They don't want to, you know, do the Common Core curriculum or whatever. They want to teach what's best for the kids sitting in front of them, and that may mean that those kids aren't going to score real well on the statewide exams. And so, you know, I mean, it, it certainly doesn't say that I, they shouldn't be doing that. They shouldn't be changing. Obviously, that was fraudulent, but. Uh, then again, you know, it's. It, I would say that it's probably not necessarily uh, harmful to kids what they were doing. No, I totally agree. And and if I miscommunicated, then then I apologize. But I don't recall saying that it would somehow harm the kids. It would actually be good for the kids because they get higher test scores. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess you could. I guess you could say that in the long run that they didn't learn the material. But who really cares? Because the government schools, it's just a bunch of memorization, just rote memorization. And I can tell you that I didn't. That didn't stick with me. You know. I, well, I memorized a bunch of, the, of stuff and it's gone. Right, but those statewide exams, as you as you increase the high stakes nature of them, I mean, teacher uh, pay is tied to it. The schools grade, you know, they grade schools often. That's tied to it. I mean, it's, there's going to be an inclination to change the exams, and quite frankly, the kids don't care what they get uh, on those exams. It doesn't necessarily follow them or anything. Gene, thanks for your call and the All thoughts. Right. Appreciate it. Toll free number tonight. You can get on the air just like that. Mm. The number here is eight fifty five four fifty free. Coming up, more about this eighth grader who got in some. High Hot water with felony charges for a computer prank. Something very, very simple. Something that all kinds of geeky kids have done at their schools. Like me. 855-450. Free. It's Free Talk Live. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. Gold, it's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. 
According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mints, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2236. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live on this live Sunday edition. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. He's in eighth grade. Pasco County, presumably Florida, Paul R. Smith Middle School. He's in trouble with a felony charge, at the very least maybe more than one. Felony charge for uh, essentially offense against a computer system, an offense against a computer system, and unauthorized access. So he uh, ostensibly got onto a computer network at school, went into a teacher's computer, changed the background on the computer to two men kissing, and was somehow <laughs> caught right. for it. That's a fine prank for an eighth uh, for an eighth grader. Yeah, that's an eighth grade prank. So Green said from an interview from his home, uh, this is the young man, his name is Dominic Green, saying that, uh, quote, even though some might say this is a teenage, oh wait, no, excuse, that was what the cop said. Green said in an interview from his home that students regularly access the administrative account to to and even use school computer cameras to see each other. The faculty and administration were simply clueless about se computer security. But none of the students' cyber activities were nefarious, and if anything, this indicates how lax the school was with securing their computers. The school slapped Green with a three-day suspension for accessing the system, which turned into 10 days after he was arrested and held in the Land O'Lakes, definitely Florida, yep. detention center. But far from actually hacking, Green says... Uh, Green said that passwords were simply the teacher's last names. He learned this by just watching them type the password in. And I guess that technically isn't hacking because he sort of socially engineered them yeah, in a way. Yeah, social engineering, right? Maybe. Uh, it's a pretty lame 
way to, um, I mean, you know, what what would be the most likely password that these teachers would have onto their uh, network? Birth date? Yeah, something like that. But obviously they weren't doing that. It it didn't take much for these. The word say, password? Yeah, the password. The word love? Be, well, no, no. Um, they had to make it different for each pe- teacher so that they'd know which teacher did what on the network. So the school has to have different passwords for each of them. So birth date, social security, teacher's name. Yeah. These these um you know certainly make sense. The first four letters of the teacher's name with uh you know the year they were born or something some kind of um right you know some system some system. And if they don't change it, then it's easy to figure out what all of them are based yeah. on knowing that system. So he's been charged with a felony for that. He says, quote, I logged out of that computer and logged into a different one, and then I logged into a teacher's computer who I didn't like and tried putting inappropriate pictures onto his computer to annoy him. He explained his mother, Eileen, said that he that her son did do something wrong, but she does not agree with a felony charge or an arrest for it's ridiculous. it. Ridiculous. Sheriff says this arrest should come as a warning to other students. <laughs> See, this is crap. I hate when they do this. So they're trying to warn other students. Send out a memo. Put a commercial on the television. Go to the school and warn other kids. Do not sentence one kid to make an example to the other kids because that means you're sentencing him for a crime other than what he did. You're trying to sentence him to send a message. No cause. The sheriff says if information comes back to us and we get evidence that other kids have done it, they're going to face the same consequences. He concluded, now I imagine that this felony charge will be reduced to a misdemeanor on a guilty plea from the young man, presuming he does plead guilty in this case, as most Eighth people grade, do. Eighth grade, hopefully this is uh, lowered to a juvenile, no matter what it is. Yeah, so I mean, I suspect that's what's going to happen. This is the way the police system works, the so-called justice system, where they the best hit thing you could happen with, to this kid is to never go back to a public school anyway. I totally agree. Where they'll hit people with uh, the most serious-sounding criminal charges because there's no, it's no skin off their back. If the cops want to hit you with a felony charge, even if it's you know, even if it's completely illegal, even if you didn't do what that felony charge alleges that you did. Well, later on, they can always just come back and say, oh, well, we're going to reduce this to a misdemeanor. And there's no penalty for them. They don't suffer any kind of consequence because they've hit you with the hardest sounding charges right up front. They want to encourage you to take the plea deal. And in this case, he's probably admitted having done this. It sounds like, obviously, it sounds you know, like he's talking a, to the media yeah. that uh, saying he's done these things. So, I mean, they've got him, basically. How they caught him, I'm not sure. I know that when this happened with me, uh, when I was in school, it was probably ninth grade or something like that, ninth or tenth grade, so not too much older than him. And I was literally caught red-handed uh, having logged into the principal's computer <laughs> remotely from the science classroom. Oh, God, this is hilarious. And he actually had no password on his computer, so when the password prompt came up, I just hit enter and bypassed it. <laughs> Uh, and got right into his computer and just started looking around at all of the files on the computer. And the teacher in the science class managed to basically sneak up behind me and uh, observe what I was doing. I was not tipped off by any of my friends that were around. How'd they, uh, how'd they so, get any clue that that's what you were doing? How'd the I teacher? don't recall. Okay. Um you know, I I could have admitted it at that time. I don't know. If, no, you know, I meant how did the teacher even think to to sneak up behind you and look at what you're doing? Is this just common for them to do this? Um. Well, there, this was back in a day, Mark, when not everybody had computers, right? So I was on like a class computer, basically, yeah. where there was maybe no more than four. So he just wanted to see what computers. you were doing, like I to think see. So it was okay. a, it was a woman, and yeah, she did want to see what I was doing on there. And I don't know, maybe the people around me were acting suspiciously or whatever. I don't recall. Okay. It was just, you know, too late. I wasn't informed that I was in any kind of danger. And I got caught red-handed for that that one. So that ended up for me, because this was back in, you know, 1995 or 6 or something like that. So... Uh, for me, that that ended up that I went to the principal's office and I got a referral written up, and I don't remember what the consequence was for that referral, but ultimately, they I got to give them credit. They actually kind of spun this into something that was positive, and what they did was they had this tech team at the school that was like a you know a group of computer geeks, 
that essentially went around and provided technical services for mm -hmm. these clueless teachers who had no idea what they were doing. These people couldn't even write an email and didn't know one thing about the Internet, you know, the World Wide Web or whatever. And th this was back when the Internet was a new thing. Yeah. And not everybody even had email accounts yet, let alone had experience being online. And so they, they formed this tech team thing for myself and these other guys who had also probably gotten in trouble for stuff, who knew things technically and they were capable of helping sort of administer the the IT, if you will, of the of the school. So instead of getting in trouble, they actually said, well, you know, maybe we could use his knowledge for good. Yeah, or that's something the best like path. That. And so they made that move and they actually I ended up getting credit like school, high school credit for going to this tech team class. So really, it worked out for the best for me. This poor kid's facing felony charges. <laughs> I mean, and here you are helping the school out. I'd be in prison but if I, I mean, if I case, were in this school isn't today. Even, this isn't even hacking on this kid's part, though. I mean, like he didn't do anything that was that amazing, other than seeing that uh, some teacher somewhere used their last name to log in. Yeah, well, neither did I. I mean, I hit the enter button and got past his password. Mm. I mean, I basically took a guess that his password might be blank and tried that and got in. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's not really hacking. Uh, maybe it is hacking. Is it brute forcing, if you will? Like, I remember I was at a well, uh, service the very merchandise fact once. That this was done in 1995 makes it hacking. Okay, like, fair you enough. did something with a computer in 1995 to cause trouble. You, you're a hexor. I remember uh, being at Service Merchandise, which was a retailer a long time ago, and they were they had a computer system or computers on display there, and I managed to just guess their password. I just typed in SMC for Service Merchandise Computers <laughs> and got in. After trying a few guesses that didn't work, more coming up here in moments. It's Free Talk Live. I have bought a few bottles of heart and body extract and have to say that it, it certainly does work. That's what Jack from Michigan had to say after his experience with heart pain and what he did to treat it with heart and body extract. I actually had a huge heart flutter. I was also having some edema around my ankles and very worrisome clot in my uh, right leg that would happen from time to time while I was trying to sleep. Heart and body extract is all natural with no negative side effects. It will help repair or correct past problems associated with the heart and body circulation. After my second bottle of heart and body extract, all problems are now gone. Order at hbextract.com or call 866-295-5305. I ordered a third bottle of Heart and Body Extract for maintenance as I want to keep everything working. Order Heart and Body Extract at 866-295-5305 or hbextract.com. Heart and Body Extract for a long and healthy life. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. 
Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you join us here. Toll-free numbers 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype on in at username lrn.fm. Joining you in the studio tonight, Ian here. And Mark. Uh, so we were talking about this young man who it's, I don't know if you can call this zero tolerance, but it certainly seems to be an extension of that. It's not your typical zero tolerance story. Normally zero tolerance stories are in relation to a student at a government school getting caught with uh, usually a, wep a weapon or some facsimile of a weapon or maybe making a weapon with his fingers to sort of point at someone and go pew, pew. somebody is scared somebody brings a butter knife to school i mean there's all kinds of ridiculous weapon related zero tolerance stories there are drug related ones where a student will get caught with some aspirin that his parents might have given him or her uh that uh, that results in suspensions and charges and all kinds of ridiculous nonsense we've had boy scouts getting in trouble for having a medical kit with a knife a blade in it in their car in the school parking lot uh, just all kinds of just ridiculous stuff. Now you've got a story where a young man gets into a computer system. He accesses a teacher's computer, leaves a graphic on the background of that computer, changes that graphic, and therefore is now facing a felony charge, according to the website countercurrentnews.com. We'll continue with this discussion here in a moment. But bitcoins, they are... I think priced fairly well right now. The $230 range, last time I looked, you can go and pick some up over at expresscoin.com. Or maybe you want to check out Litecoin or Dogecoin or another coin. They've got a few different others there, from what I understand. Expresscoin.com. But I really focus on Bitcoin personally. That's, to me, the most important of the cryptocurrencies. And that is the way to get your Bitcoins. It's the best way, uh, in my opinion, to do it. They have a very low fee. And in fact, the fee can be zero if you order less than $40 worth of Bitcoin or one of those other currencies. If it's less than $40 worth of it, then you can use coupon code FTL. And you'll get that Bitcoin in your Bitcoin wallet with no fee whatsoever. You can use uh, money order, check, or wire transfer. And it's easy. It's safe. It's fast and inexpensive. They're a licensed money services business. Go and get started. Whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, it's expresscoin.com. That is expresscoin.com. And once you get some Bitcoin, if you'd like to donate Bitcoin to Free Talk Live, you can go to our Bitcoin tip jar at bitcoin.freetalklive.com. And you get the Bitcoin address you'll need there to make that contribution. So once again, that's bitcoin.freetalklive.com. And you get your Bitcoins over at expresscoin.com. So, Mark, uh, this young man being charged with a felony, I think your advice is the best advice here, and that is that he should not, under any circumstance, go back to within the walls or on this property of the school district. It's just not a safe place for children. Yeah, I don't think you can specifically, uh, you know, pick out Pasco County as, uh, you know, and, and call it among the worst uh, schools in America. But the numbers that we've seen here on the show is that, on average, 19% of students that graduate from government schools, and that's a really important word, graduate from government high schools, are functionally illiterate. 
and in some districts as high as 40 percent. I have no idea um, what you know things are what what things are like in Pasco County, uh, Florida. Uh, you know, being from from Manatee County, Florida, I can say that uh, you know when we when we played. Uh, them in basketball, we we'd uh, you know make little jokes about how rednecky they were and that sort of thing. But you know that's folks from Bradenton making fun of folks from Pasco, so I have no clue. Um, so I would say on average, though, that you can generally expect that a government school is going to be the worst school in a given sort of geographic area. Mm-hmm. And it's so bad that you are forced to pay for it. The only thing a government school is generally better than is another government school. So they, you know, you can pull, compare government school to government school and usually pick a winner. Sometimes um, there are those like bad kid private schools out there mm. that, uh, you know, like your kids so bad they uh, they have a, a, a school a private school that just sort of takes the bad kids. Really? Uh, was there one of those in Sarasota? There was one in Bradenton. Huh. Um, uh, but I don't know what, you know, like I wouldn't say its name right now because yeah. maybe it's changed its brand or something like that. But there was a time when... Essentially, this school was the, the where the bad kids Interesting. went. Interesting. That uh, either got a, you know suspended and they didn't feel like they were getting a fair shake. In was the this school. private school getting payments from the government? To I do not believe students? so. No, I don't think so. It's this was this would have been the late eighties that I'm talking. I remember about. hearing about the government schools that were for the bad kids, but I don't remember hearing about private schools. For I, them. This is. Uh, I still think it's a, a very safe generalization to say that the. Government schools are generally the worst school in a given geographic area. I think that's true. And that if you want to get a better education, that a private school is generally going to be a step up. Homeschooling is going to be a step up from there. uh, Yeah, homeschooling, I think with more and more people getting into it, is not quite as academically, um, you know, they don't stand out quite as much academically. So Mm. the homeschool students individually, you'll often find them, you know, Ruling the day at the the spelling, the bee. spelling bees and and these sorts of things the the competitions that are out there, but there's a lot more people trying homeschooling, a lot more people doing unschooling and these sorts of things, and so, you know, you're you're getting you know fewer of the academic standouts. One of the reasons that I choose to we choose to educate my son at home is because I don't want him being held back. His reading is really really you know he's he's well above grade level in reading. I don't want him getting the clue that. Hey, there's other kids out there that can't read as well as me. Uh, maybe I should be, you know, maybe may, maybe I'm pushing myself a little too hard there. Right? <laughs> Dial it back. Right. I don't want him to get that clue. Yeah, sure. Last night he was in reading, uh, you know, one of his books, something Harry and Mudge or something like that, to the dog. I want as much of that <laughs> going on as possible, and I don't want him being ruined by a teacher, frankly. Um, you know, whatever the teacher's doing, they're teaching to 25 kids, especially in a government school. Maybe it's a fewer than that in a uh, private school. But I don't want that happening. Uh, you know, like, <laughs> we know exactly where he's at as far as reading level and math level and those sorts of things, and we can teach to that far better than they can do that do in some other school. I don't want him ruined by the this education system out there. All it's trying to do is sort of turn people into academics. I don't know if you people have any clue, but academics are poorly paid and generally not, uh, you know, not, not armed to to function in society. Yeah, I, don't I don't want my son to be an academic I don't necessarily. Know if it's trying to do that, I think the school system's trying to turn people into worker drones for the most part. The people that are you I don't, know, that go on to college for many years, I guess you could describe them as academics. I think that but. the school system was designed originally to create worker drones, but I don't think it's doing that no. now. I mean, what what would be the point in creating worker drones? To I mean, control people? Okay, so yeah, I think you have the whole bells going off thing. Sure, that shows people. Um, well, that, not just that, but just dumbing them down and, and training them to believe that they have to go to college, get a degree, get a career, retire, and then you know collect Social Security until they die. This that's is not dumbing of, them down. That's socializing them to the government system. Well, they also dumb them down at the same time. You don't yes. want them to critically think. You don't want them to think outside of the box. You want them to accept what they're told as truth. You want them to, you know, gobble it up because the government system told them that their school to- told them X, Y, and Z, so it must be true. Don't question the official story. Don't question the government. Don't question authority, and then just go along with your life and follow that prescribed path, and everything will be fine, kids. Just do what we say. I think that that's just a function of authority. 
That's just what happens. If you have a government in charge of students, you're going to have them doing just that. And that's that goes on in private schools, too. Private school teachers don't want you critically thinking. They want you to learn what's in the damn book. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I can't say. I've never been to a private school, but I've heard people say nice things about the teachers at private schools. I've been to private schools, too, but that doesn't mean that they want to teach you critical thinking skills. Critical thinking skills is really something you're going to have to teach yourself mm. or have to teach your kid because a a teacher is not incentivized to teach critical thinking skills. Well, I don't see why not. I mean, if that's what the parents want. Why not the... Why not a government school then? Well, because government school doesn't want you to critically think. They, Look, they, I went know, to private school most of my life, and I can tell you that the teachers at Braden and Christian School had to control 25 students just like any well, other. Well, Christian school. I mean, of course, they don't want you to critically think. How many, critical, asking questions how many about the schools Bible. out there? How many private schools out there do you think there are besides Christian schools? You got Christian schools, there's preparatory some, schools, there's some elite and schools a, out there, right? Where right. they teach, you know, kids sort of the outside. I have the no system. clue what they teach at these uh, prep schools. I have yeah, no clue. I don't clue. either, but I imagine it's a completely different uh, curriculum. My parents paid for the schools. best education that they were able to pay for in Bradenton, for Florida, them, and they enough. got just crappy old yeah. education. 855 450 free. More coming up here. It's Free Talk Live. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read chapter one at SurvivorMax.com. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Hi, this is Steve Sanchez, and based on a recent study, it was found that 57 million Americans had legal issues over the last 12 months, but only 60% of those studied sought out the services of a lawyer. Why? In a nutshell, affordability. While well, my friends at Legal Shield have created a solution that can help you not if, but when you need an attorney. For as little as $17 per month, Legal Shield will provide you unlimited access to qualified attorneys at an accomplished law firm for advice and counsel on legal issues no matter how serious or trivial. For over 40 years and with 1.4 million families across North America, Legal Shield can help you, the loyal GCN listener. Representatives are standing by now to answer your questions, so call them now at 1-855-340-SAVE. That's 1-855-340-7283 or visit them at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Results will vary from case to case. Free Talk Live's recent Bitcoin sale was a big success, so we decided to extend the 50% discount through April 17th. Free Talk Live was the first ad venue in the world to accept Bitcoins for ads. We love the concept of a value-based digital currency that allows people to actually control their own money. We introduced Roger Veer, Bitcoin Jesus, to Bitcoins, and here's what he said. Free Talk Live is the premier voice for the peace and liberty Bitcoin will bring to the world. By broadcasting this message since 2011, Free Talk Live has been instrumental in creating the widespread adoption that we have today. If you need some advertising for your business, website, or organization, and you want to save half off, send me an email right now, mark at freetalklive.com. This is your chance to save 50% on national radio and podcast ads. Just pay with Bitcoin. Email mark at freetalklive.com. That's mark at freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. 
LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at Africa. Dot LRN dot FM. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. Africa dot LRN dot FM. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. You may dial toll-free to take control of the airwaves, as we like to say here on Free Talk Live. The number is 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Just send a contact request to us there. It'll be approved once we notice it come in, and after that point, it'll be easy for you to call us and bring up whatever you would like. You can also join us online and help us out via the Free Talk Live AMP program. If you like what we're doing and you want to help support Free Talk Live, please become an amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. The 5 bucks a month you send in via PayPal, through any major credit card, or via Visa or MasterCard right on our website, that 5 bucks we will invest into Free Talk Live. We'll use that money to get on more great radio stations around the country, bring more Internet listeners on board, expand our satellite footprint, and expose new people to the ideas of freedom. So please go and sign up at amp.freetalklive.com, A-M-P, amp.freetalklive.com. And don't forget our African fundraiser going on right now. It's separate from the AMP program. Uh, go to africa.lrn.fm. You can contribute whatever amount you want. There's some cool perks there, too. And then please share that if you haven't yet done so, uh, africa.lrn.fm. So uh, toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. Maybe you've got a story about being in school and doing something that got either a ridiculous punishment or maybe would have gotten a ridiculous punishment had you been in school today rather than a decade or two decades ago. Uh, Mark, you graduated, what, the late 80s, early 90s? Yep. Late 80s, late 80s 19, 1988 or something 1989, like that. Yeah. Mine was 80, uh, 98 was when I graduated, and it was right... After I graduated, I think, was when the uh, Columbine thing happened. And a lot changed after the Columbine thing happened. That's certainly for sure. People got super, super sensitive about suggestions of violence, I guess. I mean, I've told the story before that when I was in uh, school as a high schooler, I created a, a Doom modification for the video game Doom that created uh, that turned all the monsters in the game to floating scanned heads from the yearbook of uh, teachers teachers and one other student as well who was sort of the goody goody little snitch in school <laughs> so i put him in there and, apparently you were fond of this guy yeah nobody really liked this kid anyway he was always brown nosing up to the teachers and snitching on people and stuff like that i guess that makes more sense than anything else honestly so uh so you know so each of these monsters in the game had been changed out so you could play through the entire game and you would just constantly be facing these floating disembodied heads that would you know shoot things at you and if you shot them then they would die in a very gore-filled manner as a teenage boy is want to create if they have the technical ability I, i'm sure if that was discovered today then i would have been uh, you know charged with some kind of felony isn't this doom mod wasn't this uploaded somewhere on the free talk live bbs or something i mean somebody no, had it no i don't think i ever found that thing again okay. it was uh, it slipped my grasp one of the files that i did not hold on to over over the years so yeah i don't believe that one exists anywhere but nonetheless, it did happen, and I was responsible for it, and I suspect that if this young man had been found with a similar thing, he would have faced some charges for that. He's now facing felony charges for simply changing the background on a teacher's computer. I mean, this is part of what eighth-grade boys do for fun, what? is access systems they're not supposed to access. We had a story where a high school kid uh, got suspended or um, something. I can't remember what it was, precisely the, the punishment, for creating, uh, just writing a story that took place at the setting was at school, yeah, that's a, a right. zombie story. And zombie stories have become very, very popular. So use your use a place that you're familiar with as a setting, and that's worthy of some kind of punishment or another. Schools have gone bananas. It's insane, and, and if no you don't to think your you're going to create your kid as some little government sycophant by sending them there, 
I'd, I'd be worried. Yeah, I'd be really concerned about it, no doubt about it. So, again, you can share your thoughts, share your experience. The toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. I feel like there was one other thing I wanted to add, but I don't know, I'm spacing on that. So, Mark, you've got a story. Yeah, Eric Holder's mad. He's mad. This is the Attorney General. That's right. The Attorney General here, Eric Holder, is mad because apparently Department of Justice employees just won't stay away from the hookers. Oh, man. It says here... <laughs> He's sent out a memo in an all news. Uh, Where is this from? Uh, this is from businessinsider.com, okay. but they have the memo there. Oh. Um, in an all new all staff memo issued on Friday, uh, Eric Holder warned that such behavior could lead to being fired. The Department of Justice is measured by the conduct of those who work on its behalf. Yes, it is. And it's full of <laughs> whoremongers, mm. apparently. Um now they're saying not to visit prostitutes, but they could still like be, uh, you know, pimps or whatever. I, I, yeah, I shouldn't use the term whoremonger because that's an improper uh, usage of it. That's a person that sells hookers yeah. as opposed to one that uh, uh, buys them. But so um, this is a prohibition on using prostitutes as a customer, but they could, in theory, still. Uh, be a pimp for a prostitute. I think it's ridiculous. Right? Um, no, they certainly couldn't no. do that. But what's funny is is that people that would propose to be the Department of, of Justice. Justice will go ahead and try people for, uh, you know, prohibition-type crimes. Well, yeah. You could argue, though, that they aren't prohibiting prostitution at the federal level. Yeah, I don't think they are at, at the federal level, but— um, So it's not really hypocrisy, then? Yes, it is. They're, no. they're a bunch of law enforcers, and they're breaking the law. Well, that's true. They are breaking state law, so yeah. And I imagine Wait, prostitution it's not even is state also illegal law. in D.C. They've now there's now a prohibition against them using them at, at all. So it doesn't matter where they go or what they do. If they go oh, to okay. Amsterdam, in country. yeah, gotcha. not allowed to do that. Is that what was happening? Was they were going to other countries and doing it, or were they were actually buying street hookers or whatever? I don't know um, precisely. They're not very clear on. So we've only seen the memo. There's not uh, you right. know evidence to accompany this. And uh, I love this part. The Department of Justice is measured by its conduct of those who work on its behalf, the solicitation of prostitution threatens the core mission of the department, not simply because it invites extortion, blackmail, leaks of sensitive or classified information, but because it also mm. undermines the department's efforts at eradicating the scourge of human trafficking. Oh, so, I see. Well, you know that. what? If you want to eradicate human trafficking, legalize prostitution. I it'll mean, go a long way. It'll, it won't eliminate it completely, but it, it will definitely cut it down significantly. There are... It's a horrible thing to, you know, the sex trade of, of human beings. It's to some extent, um, you have uh, human trafficking going on in Europe for their prostitution there is the claim. Is, is that, you know, they'll tell these gals in countries where they don't make much money that, hey, you want to go to Europe and have a great job? Mm. Um, we've got a great job for you doing something besides being a hooker. And, and if then you they, leave, we'll kill your family. And then they get them there and then they can do whatever they want. I would say that to some extent... That has to do with the social welfare programs. Like, if you can live, uh, you know, s uh, get some kind of social welfare program that keeps you in reasonably good stead, then you're probably not going to want to be a hooker. But money does talk when it comes to these things. James is in Kalamazoo, Michigan. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Hello, James. James in Kalamazoo, going once. Hello? Hello? Hey, you're on the radio. Go ahead. Yes. Um, you know, I, I, I heard your topic, and it's kind of a, a funny thing. I, I witnessed this happen where um, th there was a student in the high school that I went. Uh, he went to open um, a case for an instrument. A butter knife came out, and he got expelled permanently. When was permanently this? Permanently for a butter knife? When was this? Uh well, uh, this was mid nineties. Oh, wow. uh, I graduated. Yeah, uh, he was in in my band class. L literally, he he opened up his instrument case. A butter knife came out, and he got expelled. Man, it's just shocking. And just it's think more what so he could spread with that. <laughs> more so shocking yeah. that it happened in the mid nineties as well. I mean, I guess I always thought things were a little bit. Well, easier going. What which school district was this? Where where did it happen? Uh, this, this was uh, in Portage, uh, Portage, Michigan, which is a suburb of uh, Kalamazoo, um, and uh, they, they had just recently instituted what they called a zero tolerance policy. Oh, to, you're right about that. 
Wow. Well, that, They're right about that. They have zero yeah. tolerance. If a man drops a butter knife out of his uh, um, his trombone case uh, and they suspend him, was this suspended or expulsion? It said expelled. Expelled. Jeez. Expulsion. Best thing that could ever happen Permanent to him, frankly. Expulsion. Yeah, what, yeah, what did happen to him? Uh, did he uh, go and like get uh, homeschooling or something? Or, do you know? I, I, I'm not 100% sure. It, it was kind of a... Uh, it, it, it was kind of a, a conundrum in the area. I mean, uh, I, I'm not sure. Hmm. Uh, as far as, as I know, he got accepted into another um, government school system. That no, that's too actually, bad. Didn't learn his lesson. Yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks, James, for sharing your story tonight. I appreciate it. And if you didn't get on tonight, well, no worries. We do the show seven nights per week live from 7 to 10 at night Eastern Time. You can, of course, join us anytime you like over at freetalklive.com on over 150 great radio stations around the country and uh, internationally via satellite over Central and North America. We want to get back on over Africa, so help us with our African satellite fundraiser over at africa.lrn.fm, and we'll see you tomorrow online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. A prison reform group issued a disturbing new study this week calling conditions in women's correctional facilities deplorably unsexy. The report contends that women's prisons are bleak, dangerous environments with shockingly few soapy showers and erotically charged pillow fights. According to the Prison Justice Initiative, quote, it's a shame that in today's society we still have jails that don't encourage kittenish girl-on-girl -girl exploration. Prison shouldn't be a hotbed of gang violence and drugs. It should be a steamy Shangri-La where caged nymphets discover the sexuality away from from the leering eyes of male society. The investigation revealed living conditions that many are calling cruel and degrading, but not in a fun or kinky way. The study's author argues that incarceration should be about more than just punishment. The purpose of prison isn't just to lock people in a box and forget about them. It's to provide opportunities for naughty girls to play nice with each other. Next up, a team of jock scientists have reportedly thrown the cure for asthma onto the roof of the lab. We'll talk to the nerds struggling to retrieve it. This is the Onion News Network. Free speech is protected on the internet, right? Not always. Government agencies try to limit free speech and commerce on the net. Luckily, when they do, the Institute for Justice is there to defend your First Amendment right to free speech. IJ helped set the first federal precedent for internet free speech in 1999, and ever since has worked to prevent unconstitutional roadblocks in cyberspace. Visit our website today at ij.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, April 12, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.51 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,208 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $238. Antiwar.com reports meeting Friday night at a summit in Panama, President Obama and Cuban President Raul Castro shook hands in what was the first direct meeting between the two nations heads of state in over 50 years. It's an historic encounter, but more important is what it represents. The very real chance of rapprochement between the two countries and an end to half a century of U.S. economic embargoes. The next big step in that direction would be the removal of Cuba from the U.S. list of state sponsors of terrorism. There was never much real evidence to support that listing, but this is the first time in decades the matter has ever been under real consideration, with the U.S. State Department reporting to have endorsed the removal. Progress in such removals is often dependent on political conveniences at any given time, and U.S. officials are said to be pressing Cuba for guarantees on diplomatic access, something obviously totally unrelated to terror, in return for their removal. 
Bitcoin Not Bonds is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit BitcoinNotBombs.com. UPI reports following a Justice Department report alleging sexual misconduct among DEA agents, Attorney General Eric Holder warned DOJ employees that soliciting prostitutes is a violation of policy, whether on or off duty. In a letter released to DOJ staff on Friday, Holder wrote, I want to reiterate to all department personnel, including attorneys and law enforcement officers, that they are prohibited from soliciting, procuring, or accepting commercial sex. Holder wrote in the letter, this rule applies at all times during an individual's employment, including while off-duty or on personal leave, and applies regardless of whether the activity is legal or tolerated in a particular jurisdiction, foreign or domestic. The caution comes two weeks after a report that found several Drug Enforcement Administration agents had sex parties with prostitutes that were hired by drug cartels. Justice Department Inspector General Michael Horowitz found 10 agents, most of whom had top-secret security clearances, had engaged in the party with prostitutes because it was the local culture. Seven of the ten agents admitted to being at the parties, most of which took place on U.S. government leased properties. Many of those implicated in the report received minor disciplinary action. The Washington Post reported Holder and Deputy Attorney General Sally Yates have reviewed the report and concluded the disciplinary process at the DEA was inadequate. Holder's letter hints at increased oversight for employees and supervisors. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Hillary Clinton is expected to announce her second run for the presidency on Sunday, starting her campaign as the Democrats' best hope for fending off a crowded field of lesser-known Republican rivals and retaining the White House. The overwhelming favorite for the Democratic presidential nomination, Hillary will nonetheless face multiple challenges as she returns to the campaign trail seven years after losing the nomination in 2008 to Barack Obama. She has been a high-profile figure in American politics for more than two two decades since her husband Bill won the presidency in 1992, and her fame still eclipses the other likely Democratic contenders and Republican opponents. She will try to get past a controversy over her use of personal email while Secretary of State, and find a way to connect with ordinary Americans after her years as a top U.S. diplomat.